Riders ready, watch the gate. Hey, welcome back to the Dirty Knobs Podcast. I'm your host, Hollywood Mike Miranda, and my co-hosts are my brothers in BMX, EC Eric Carter and JV James Vicente. This episode is episode number one for season two, and it features uh, crazy Ronnie Anderson. Uh, hold on, strap on your Joe Fun, man. This is going to be a wild one. Uh, enjoy the show. Thanks for tuning in. I want to do a special shout out to uh, to all of our sponsors. Thank you for hanging in there with us. Thanks for supporting us. And thanks to all of you who subscribe. If you're enjoying this, please tell a friend and make sure you hit the subscribe button. All of our episodes are available on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple. So no matter where you get your podcast, you can probably find us. But those are the big ones. Uh, finally... Listen, go to DirtyKnobs.com, buy a t-shirt, buy a hat, take a picture with yourself and send it to us. Send it to us at DirtyKnobs.com, same place where you go to buy those hats, same place to find out where and what we're doing next, and we're going to have some big, exciting news starting tomorrow. Uh, we're going to start advertising for our own event. Finally, um, for those of you who do subscribe... Every uh, every episode, I try to pick a random winner out of all of our subscribers on YouTube and send you a box of stuff that our sponsors give us. The winner of this, uh, this episode is 732 Biker. Now, we don't know who you are. So get a hold of us either through uh, our Facebook page or you can do it uh, on DirtyKnobs.com. So anyway, 732 Biker, congrats, my man. Uh, looking forward to... Talking to you guys next time and uh, enjoy the show. Woohoo! Well, he's getting out of the shower. <laughs> <laughs> um, we were we were filming all day. We were filming. Oh. Um, yeah, we got some content. We've got we filmed. Uh, we actually EC has built ninety nine percent of oh the course gosh. for the Dirty Fest. Ninety nine. So, yeah, we just need to put the last jump in, and we're all done. Wow! <coughs> Pardon me. And uh, let me tell you that thing. We so we were riding it, and it was a blast. Oh, and then nice. uh, yeah, Mike Miller from Forty Four Sixteen Designs. He came yeah. out with his uh, with his drone, and he caught drone footage just right of riding the the, the track. I thought you said he didn't know how to fly that thing. <laughs> no, I can't. I can't <laughs> oh. fly the thing. He is a master, so he got some. Oh, uh, he is. Yeah. He got some dr great drone footage, so uh, we're going to be releasing a lot of content. <laughs> Pardon me, a lot of content in the next, uh, you know, the next coming weeks about the uh, the event and uh, all kinds of stuff. Nice. How, how about wait, that picture I, I just sent you? Yeah, how about that picture I just sent you? Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, uh, our buddy Bob Horn from Skyway, Skyway yeah. Factory Rider and CW Rider, by the way. He uh he sent me an evil Knievel, you know, wind up toy for for Christmas. So I said I just got it today, and I go, oh, that's perfect. So I took it out <laughs> to the video session. So you're gonna see a lot of evil Knievel in uh in upcoming content. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll put a picture of it right here. But thanks to Bob Horn, and uh, a, a special huge thanks to Mike Miller from Forty Four Sixteen Designs for uh for sponsoring us and for. For he got us a drone to use, and uh, and he also you know came out today and and did all the the footage, and it was fantastic. I started reading his book. Yeah, it's great to have a, you know he's like you. He's a childhood friend, man. I've had him known him forever. No, good guy, and that, and that book, a book of his, is good. You know, he said he sent me a book, his one of his books, because I couldn't grab it. I didn't uh, I didn't get it. Uh, he had Day it one. Project. Yeah, very good. Yeah, you go to Amazon for all of our friends and listeners. Go to Amazon and uh, and get yourself a a copy of Day One by Michael Miller. Great it's book. It's not enough pictures in it though, for me. Yeah, well, or a pop, and or a pop up or scratch and sniff. <laughs> I only read pop ups. Yeah, I like the scratch and sniff parts. <laughs> hey, so. 
uh, when we shot the footage today, uh, I had on, I put on my Evil Knievel suit again. Oh, you did? Yeah, of course I did. did you did you write it? Did you bring a twenty? No, I wrote a I wrote a race ink twenty six inch. Oh, the um, white one, yeah. Yeah, the white one because it's kind of Evil Knievel theme. Yeah. And uh, what's funny was so I, when I you see I told EC you you take a lap, take a lap, and he starts to go, no, 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 you got to put on the whole outfit. So he put on the whole outfit. It fits him a lot different than it fits me. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, cool. oh my gosh! Oh, here he comes. It's coming on. Wet hair, don't care. Oh, <laughs> easy, fantastic. <laughs> the doghouse, folks. If oh. you ever find you, if you ever find yourself in San Bruno, if you ever have a long layover at, at San Francisco Airport. Yeah. Oh, is this the one? Oh, this is the place you were talking oh, about. Oh, yeah, dude. If you find oh, yourself with... You got a hat. Yeah. If you find yours, it's a beanie, right? If you find... It's perfect to wear while you're robbing a bank. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and There's you won't, an be, yeah, you won't be the that. only... <laughs> yeah, it's fitting for that bar. <laughs> <laughs> you won't be the only... You won't be the only felon in there. That's right. <laughs> That's oh, funny. Brother, really. look at this shirt. There, oh my gosh look at that thing hold on <laughs> look at that oh. <laughs> fantastic <laughs> that's good living right there oh man. man it's not even throwback thursday jeez dude i love it jv hey. i gotta tell you i was watch. i got on when i was looking researching uh some stuff for our guest tonight yeah uh, there was a video of an aba race in uh in texas at Gillies, I think it yeah, was. Yeah. And there's a video of you in a race. No way. Yes. And you're in second place. And uh you're in second place. And so someone next to you jumps and lands on your back. Lands you on me. Yeah, was, lands uh, on top of you. And you crashed. Yeah, that was like like uh Kevin Hall or something jumped on that, my back. That's right. It was Kevin Hall jumped on your back. And it was, I was like. It, it, right when you're coming around the course i'm going hey that's jv hey that's hey jv's in second hey jv's in, oh <laughs> you got sheepdog dude jumped right on me i think it was kevin i think so too yeah oh man it was good <laughs> wow dude, anyway okay. anyway this shirt tim Lilthorpe. fantastic has, has a called radmatic.com he makes these old school shirts but he sent me a note he goes dude you got to check this out and i was like i'm in so i'm in i bought i bought it and then and then all of a sudden we get an order from him for uh dirty knobs we see done a little did a little trade see that's great that works yep yeah business that's helping not. business, mm. <laughs> business. Helping dude today was pretty good jb i know brother i'm missing all this stuff this is the, this is you know you what happens when i'm on the other side I think so, Hollywood was stoked today. Oh, oh, he told me already while you were taking your shower. Oh, yeah. <laughs> shower meaning putting my head in the faucet. <laughs> he, told, he told me you guys had a great time. You even rode it. You rode the track. We did. Oh, dude. Other, other than the last booter jump for, for, for show. Yeah. It's, it's, that is so fast. It's such a dial track and it is it is foot foot out 70s racing yeah you will you will be putting your foot out <laughs> you'll be corners. putting your foot out yep oh nice no yeah. there's no two ways about it and you a uh, side hack can ride it oh yes? absolutely oh cool yeah yeah for sure uh -huh. it's 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 definitely side hack friendly it'll be you could ride it in an evil knievel suit a chicken suit you can it doesn't matter. everything <laughs> look oh Look how fast he's going, dude. And he's on, a, he's on a cruiser lap. He's on a cruiser. Flat turn, dude. All the way to the <laughs> edge. Oh, man. Look at that. Pretty sick, right? Is that like a, a little step up into the turn? Oh, yeah. yeah. European turn? On yep. the inside. Oh. Only on the inside. Hey, can I just... I want to say that if the camera puts on 20 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> don't, don't be fooled. The camera puts on 20 pounds. Uh, it looks long. How long is the track? It's distance long. It's not going to be race long because you're going to be hauling the mail. Downhill. Yeah. yeah, downhill. You're definitely hauling the mail. Dude, Dude you wow. saw, you saw, I, I didn't pedal. Yeah, that, no was pedal. I saw that. No, that was zero pedals. Yeah. Nice. It's um, a good, a good hard push in a shopping cart and you'll make it all the way to the finish line. <laughs> That's right. It's, it's, user, it's, it's user friendly for our customer base. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> going to be dude dirty fast is going to be off the hook yeah it's going to be pretty good man it, it actually is going to be pretty good yeah it's going to be fun it's going to be fun to race it's going to be very I, fun to race i haven't i've only ridden that right hollywood and and well you saw me build the first turn today so um can you use the berm I, what's did that make it, did you make the turn so you can use the berm oh yeah yeah oh yeah first got the first turn in got it all there's a few more op obstacles that'll get added, but for the most part, all the turns are in. They're going to get seasoned and ridden in, and um, the the uh, turns yeah. are the the turns are the best part. They're yeah, fantastic. You're, you're sliding JV when you're turning the whole time. You can feel the edge of your tire biting in and drifting and sliding. <laughs> right, so it's like you're right on the edge of traction the whole time. <clears throat> yeah, but they're not they're not flat, but they're just tiny. It just has the slightest bit of bank up. Yeah, they're all, I call them cheese cheese wedges. It's like just putting a cheese wedge on the on the ground, right? They, there's no cup to them; they're just cheese wedges. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. I was getting everybody hyped. Yeah. All right. Well, speaking of hype. Oh boy, here we go. You know, the one person, probably the yeah. Wouldn't you say the one person that more people have asked us about getting on the show? Yeah. yeah. I was nervous. I'm just gonna put it out there. I was nervous, <laughs> but JV was screaming at me and cursing at me, and just you know, so I had to give in. <laughs> yeah, we had to have we had to have him on. No, so, we had uh, yeah, man. I think, um, like you said, our our listeners have been requesting, um, understandably, right? I mean, the guy's super yeah. interesting um dude you do not know what you're gonna get right like with with ronnie you have no idea what the conversation is gonna be where it's gonna go it literally is and that's exciting it's a good intro bro in, in case you missed it that was <laughs> yeah so i mean well I, I, yeah i think it's good I, i'm i'm glad we're doing it um you know he's i he's more than deserving uh, if you match them up to the other guys that we've interviewed as far as um, resume and accomplishments and things that they've done. So, yeah, man, I mean, I, I think, I think, dude, I think he's fits the bill, man. I'm excited. I, I, I'm, I'm nervous too. Cause I, who knows where it's abroad. He's going to take this thing, man, but it's going to be, you know what, we're on the roller coaster. <laughs> well, he's uh, uh, it looks like he's trying to get in here. He is. All right. Hey, so we have what we have in front of us is the night I know for the fact is the, the 1985 ABA. The National Pro. Oh, you got. Oh, I'm sorry. I got them. I, I dug them. I got what I could get. That's right. ABA, ABA. Let's introduce ABA number one pro 1985 UBR number one 1981. The master of head games recorded a CD, a rap CD, was <laughs> once a track operator. Is this all true, Ronnie, so far? That's good stuff. That's that that that's that's Wikipedia for a minute. That's right. For oh, that's the best I could do. I'm not that smart. And then one of the best sibling combinations of all time. For sure, for sure. One of them for sure. I, I'll add to that. Brian Patterson said. The best bike handler ever. Oh, yeah. Yep, he did. What do you think, Mark? You you saw some action going down. Uh, I think that you were um, by far one of the most talented riders. I think that you were the one of the first people ever to have your own geometry that you came up with. You had one of the longest bikes. I think that you were uh, very crafty on and off the track. I think that you were not only one of the best riders, you were certainly the most disqualified rider. 
you you won in 1985 <laughs> you won the most money but you were probably the most had paid the most in fines <laughs> um you you always amazed me at well let me just cut to the chase you know i always thought that there's there are cowboy in the cowboy movies there's cowboys with the white hats and cowboys with the black hats and you always seem to play the role of the cowboy in the black hat and the crowds ate it up and they cheered and cheered and cheered for you and uh, you how could you not love that i mean you what um, i'm giving out way too much right now but i think that's one thing that the sport of bmx lacks today and you brought it in spades yeah, trying to get it back to where you you know where it, i think it counts today it just yeah we could we could we're trying to touch that i see you guys at frogtown and i felt that spirit you know and it, it deserves to you know have be paid homage i think we all miss it you know yeah we definitely, well, going back to Frogtown, we definitely had an, we had a blast. We had such a great time, and uh, it does it makes you realize how much you miss it. And the best part was hanging out with our pals, and that was awesome. It, it also it makes you mentors, you know. Yeah, yeah. but you all, all of them really, I think. Yeah, and mostly, in fact, I see Bob back there hanging back there on the uh, wall there. Frog Fro Frogtown was cool though. Um, for me right like yeah i've gone to some modern bmx races in recent years and so it was really good uh to go to frogtown not only to see you know my heroes growing up um the foundation of the sport uh to network with all those people all those people in one spot is amazing uh, it just doesn't happen right but to see the contrast that there was there was a definite contrast of energy between going to the ABA grands. Now that's a monster race, but going to the ABA grands, the vibe that you felt in that arena and then going to Frogtown and the vibe you felt at Frogtown, it really did pull you back to old school. It was almost like a fairy tale. It's a fairy tale. That's a, yeah. It, no it, kidding. Was, it was the hot, it was the hot tub time machine. <laughs> going back to your, uh, you know, your accomplishments, one thing I don't think Wikipedia said, but I, I have always known, I think that you tripled more than any other pro. It seems yeah, like when you wanted a race, you want everything. You don't want to talk about it. You know, when I fell off of the chart where I was no longer a, a double A winner anymore, where Mike, where another Mike was taken over and so it's such forth, you know, I didn't by choice want to see that happening or thought it was going to happen or was I going to allow it to happen? Um, but that's the way the cards fell. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. I know I went in three times with number one points, you know, or within a point and uh, come out once, you know, uh, to the public, you know, of a, you know, there's controversy of why, 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 what, you know, but that's just me. But my run through it was, you know, special, just like anybody else's, you know, and, and I know people want to know about that run. But there's more important things too, you know, it's funny because BMX, like today we're supposed to have fun here, you know, and how much fun is it to, you know, clown the sport for allowing it to fall the way it's fallen. As far <laughs> to me, it's fallen, okay? If you're a number one pro today and you got a $10,000 check, that's kind of a kick in the nuts, ain't it guys? Well, uh, when you look, if, you, if you're number one pro and you get a Trans Am, and you get one number one pro and you get a, a Mustang and you're a number one pro and you get an electric scooter. It, it There's definitely a slide. Yeah, there was there What was. happened? We had, I'm sorry. Eric. So no. Mike, so in 84, when Pete got his Trans Am, that was a really nice Trans Am. I mean, come on, it wasn't Brent's, but no smoking, but it was still, uh, you know, this is what we're doing. Okay. BMX, you know, it's like, all right, right. So in 85, when we got those letters in January, or we know we got them in December and they're like, yeah, we're going to change the car to the national number one. Uh, the only difference is, is, uh, you know, national number one, will get a $4,000 check. But in the event that one rider wins both events, he'll receive a $50,000 value. So you had to be super cross number one and national number one. And you're like, but everybody showed up for those races until Harry, Ronnie, Eddie, 
maybe maybe a couple. I don't know if it was Eddie so much, but Eddie was winner too. But uh, you know, Harry wanted some of that Trans Am, but he wasn't thinking about getting fifty thousand though either. He was thinking, you know, I'm gonna, you know, I remember going to uh, lunch. So B, what I'm saying is, is back in that day, BMX was growing. Okay, the brass ball was getting bigger. You know, there the bull the bull was running free, and uh, so to speak, for somebody if he was willing to if he could do it, you know. But I'm going to, I haven't decided, I just wanted that Trans Am too, you know, if I'm going to take my girl on vacation where she's got a little belly, I'm going to dig some holes in the sand, you know, we'll get back to racing, you know, <laughs> I did that, it's mine, you know, so, you know, I'm building a family and, and I remember Tammy said to me, she says, so Ronnie, she says, you know, she goes, you, you could win both titles and if you did, you'd win 50,000, get that Taco Bell you want, <laughs> okay. I was like, yeah, that wow, that could happen, huh? I was thinking, yeah, let's do that, you know? <laughs> so I wasn't racing for a Trans Am no more. I'm racing for 50 grand. Give me Taco Bell right, you know? I love them enchri enchiladas. Enchiladas? <laughs> great. You know? yeah. Enchiladas and Taco Bell, yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, I can't imagine cra crazy Ronnie. Yeah, thinking about is, enchiladas behind the to, gate to the, to the, i will say to the point ronnie you, you know it, it has it has um you know as a as a pro rider i know when i was working at hyper and i was talking to some of the the writers and we were going to bring pro writers on and we were talking about salaries and money and how much you're getting paid and i was just it it, it was a bummer man it was a bummer to hear I, 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 yeah, I quit it making, could only make 30 grand. I was at no longer could afford anything. Yeah. When did, when did that turn? About what year did that turn? Very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> so it happened. I, so again, I, Eric, I appreciate that too. And, and there was an average for us. And, you know, I think it was like 25 back in 85 to 35,000, the max they would give. And, you know, maybe Stu in 81, I know, got 100 grand. You know, I got the same phone call, but my knee was out of socket and I couldn't accept the sponsorship. I told her, I said, I said, you know, I have to have surgery tomorrow. But I said, um, I said, yeah, I'd, I'd love to be Stu's team teammate. And um, I thought he he did really well with that sponsorship. But she said, Ronnie, she says, I'm sorry. She says, I wish you the best of luck. You know, he, you know, and so. I didn't get the sponsorship, but the next, uh, the following at the following brands, I remember getting a double out of two classes. <laughs> I was looking under my elbow and I saw Stu once, you know. <laughs> I yeah. used to hear stories here in Southern California. We used to hear stories about the way your dad used to train you and your brother. Uh, the one I, yeah, the uh, well, the Pat Nolf. And no, I heard long before that. Yeah. Um, we, we had heard. Someone had, I think it was Kevin McNeil, told me that you used to tie car tires, car rims, strap, strap, strap car rims to you. And you have to drag them across the field doing sprints. Maybe so, but I do remember um, seeing, like, you know, it, uh, it happened, you know, get out of a van after a thousand miles or something, you know, and maybe you pissed once or twice, but you see a grass field right there and that's all that's there. But your bike's last on the rack. You're going to take that bike off the rack and you're going to attack that grass field <laughs> like it's nobody's business. And you're only, yeah. And you're just going to rip here, rip there, rip it up. And then you're going to get back in the van and you're going to feel like the boss. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, I think we were all built like that. I mean, you know. I, it's funny because we want to re-talk about some of those stories. I remember going to little Stevie Hutchinson, one of our riders on Hank and Frank. My dad, he would pull over the van and everybody would get out. And dad would pull away about, you know, a mile up the hill. And, you know, and we would all ride and we'd get next to him and he'd pull again. And then he'd pull up again, you know, a little further maybe or whatever. And then we'd get there. And he pull up again, you know, and <laughs> I'd start getting pissed, you know, but we eventually, you know, he'd pull over because there'd be a little kid too, but man, we ran him hard. And I remember, you know, you, everybody's got to take a piss now, you know, or I'll get next to every, you know, and my leg is looking wet, you know, and, <laughs> over and 
Phil Stevens went on my leg. You know. <laughs> God. It happens. <laughs> he ran the pitch out of that kid. I'm surprised he, you know, when those kids quit. My dad built a lot of champions and a lot of people. Yeah. That's the gave that's, him all the same opportunity. And, you know, just as a person, you know, I think in BMX, he uh, excelled in, you know, not just by vicariously uh, through his boys, um, but yeah, he, what I was going to just say about him, I've lost it. Okay. But <laughs> well, I, all I know is that you, if you're, your dad, your dad trained you and your brother. And that people do what they didn't know they could do, the ability to be able mm. to do that. And he, he kind of like a psychologist in a way. And it almost wasn't fair because you would die to do what Papa A asked you to go do. Hey, I can speak to that, Ronnie. Yeah. I, I, I'll, I'll tell you, and I, I think I've <laughs> said it on another one of the podcasts we've done, but at the 80, 85 grand, um, it was my first year really going for a title. And I came in uh, and I got beat in the semi uh, quarters and the quarters, man. Um, and the guy in front of me, uh, you know, rest in peace, Lonnie Tatton, one, was a good friend of mine. And, yeah, but, I like Lonnie. but I was ways faster than him at that time. Like when we were younger, he was faster than me, but I was much faster than him. I remember. Go ahead, though. Dude, I didn't. I followed him the whole race, the whole lap. Uh, so unlike me, I just followed him deer in headlights. And I remember coming across the finish line and just being like, what in the hell did you just do? Right. And Richie happened to be at the finish line. And okay. I was like, totally bummed, man. I was just like, dude. And he goes, come here, man. I want you to talk to my dad. And I, and I, so I talked with your dad, dude, for probably 10 minutes. Um, and was that the first time you talked to him? He talked was, to him in 85? Yeah. Yeah, really? yeah. That's yeah. funny because I think I'd be like, oh, dad was mad at Eric. Eric's already in trouble. I thought he'd probably been talking to you for a while. No, no. I mean, I, <laughs> you know, I, he was tearing on you too much. Just, time, Eric. Yeah. Was to get away, huh? It was a, you know what? It was my first real talk with Papa A, right? It wasn't like a, I mean, I talked to him before, but that was the first like real time that I could talk. And dude, he got me in a different frame of mind. I went out, I won my open, won all the rest of my laps. I completely flipped it around, dude. After. But did you win the main event that day? I, well, I won my open main event. Okay. That's all I had left. I didn't make open. it out of my quarter. Open wasn't even a contingency class. It's just. It, no, but it, but it, but he had me, what he had, what he had me do, basically his message was, you know, that you got, yeah, you got beat, but what are you going to do now? Right. What are you going to do now? You lost you still got more racing that moves. day, huh? You got bullied in class, didn't you, that day? I did. Yeah. And then you came back and won the next year, huh? That's right. That's right. So Doug when you Davis. To Pop A, did you already lose that national number one title that day? I, I did. I was, I got, I was out. Your dad probably lost money on you. You fucking <laughs> speak my language. You up. <laughs> but, I, but I'll tell you, Ronnie. You I won open. I knew there was a gimmick to that one. You're, but you're, <laughs> I will say. But I still do consider you one of the best ever. So uh, cool. Thank you. But yeah. listen, man, what I was going to say, man, is your dad oh, and, and your, your dad and my dad were very similar with very similar the way they would talk to very similar the way they would talk to racers mm -hmm. the things that they would say and planting seeds right like it would they were like it would plant a, a seed of positivity into your head and then you would be the one that would um nurture that seed and grow it into something good right it wasn't like it wasn't like rocky training where it's like you're gonna be strong you're gonna be it was super subdued and calm and um, yeah, Rocky was a place where we could go and play about it, but his knowledge was to be, he was the custom auto to your Tyson before custom right. auto and Tyson were even a thing. Right. Right. And so it was, yeah, man, I could speak to pop, Papa A, man. It was, I was like, dude, it was like wizard stuff, man. It was so crazy. Like I came off the track on that lap and I was distraught, dude. I was completely just mind jacked. I, and I didn't even get a chance to talk to my dad 
before I talked to your dad. And I went back up and my dad was like, dude, are you all right? What's I'm like, yeah, I'm good, man. It's good. I'm good. I talked with next time. And you did yeah. it next time. Yeah, I said, talked with Richie's dad. We're good, man. He's like, okay. Like, yeah, okay. Not over that one. That's not easy to get over. I couldn't imagine that. That, that hurts. You, you, obviously, we lose before we win, you know, before we get to the top. We don't have to fall off the mountain, but it's a good thing we caught ourselves because if not, yeah, you know. Hey, it was it, you know what, Ronnie? Yeah, it was the, for me, it was the best thing that could have happened, right? It would have been, I, I would, I, who knows where I would have gone had I won the title that year, right? But I didn't. And I got my ass kicked. And Doug Davis was right. I wasn't ready to win the title that year. But guess what? Yeah, that motivated me for a whole year. Huh? And I went on a tear. Yeah, you didn't pay attention to nobody anymore. And you just kind of, it's because like you grow up, it's like, man, how could I make such a mistake like that? Mm. You know, telling somebody that you're going to beat them doesn't mean it's going to happen. I remember I had that with Brian at um, Devinger Downs. We got in a who's going to win contest. And <laughs> somehow my dad got a hold. He wasn't even there, but I don't know later. And he, because I already knew you, my dad's you never tell anybody you're going to beat him. But the funny thing is, is, me and Brian got in one of those once and neither of us won. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Hey, hey, I, Ronnie, imagine. I want to say, man, I was like Mike said, I was always I like to always watch your races. Right. Anytime I knew you were going to be on the gate, I like to watch your races because your race craft was so phenomenal. Right. And one thing that I noticed about your racing that a lot of other pros didn't do, man, is you always knew where people were around you right and that was something that i really stuck with me you always you would always take those little peaks over and you could take a tiny peak over and you could instantly place where the five other six other guys on the track were and where you needed to be man and that i mean did you work on that like for me growing up as a kid i raced from the back a lot so i'm curious for you i tell you, you what you're exactly right, EC. I remember that too about Ronnie, always looking around and seeing who was around him. Dude, he would assess. You would be going yeah, down the first totally. straightaway, down into the first turn, and he would. You could, and it was just a snapshot. He would take a look, yeah. and the snapshot you could see it snapshot, and he would assess what was going on, and and execute. And it was amazing to watch it happen right in real time. Mm -hmm. But I'm curious, Ronnie, is that from your racing growing up at locals and nationals or is that intuitive i mean wh where did that come from because it dude it's it's very unique to see that yeah so i don't want to make a joke about it but i was going to say from watching charlie's angels you know <laughs> <laughs> well from my perspective i he, what i remember the most was he would ronnie would swing wide coming into a turn leave the inside open and you think, oh, great, I'm going to go on the inside. And as soon as you caught up in the inside, dude, he had the longest legs in BMX. He would just yeah. put his leg out and cover the whole inside of the turn so you couldn't pass him. And, and if you got, and if you caught up to his wheel, if you caught up to his leg, he would pull it back in with your tire with it. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, the first time I saw him do it, I go, oh, I, I got my little, I got my little brother, Tony, and we practiced that. I don't think I was a cheater, though. No, that's not cheating. I, I, I don't call that cheating. You would turn fast and come out faster. But if you're, if I was ahead of you and you were going to uh, end up doing that, so by the time we met at point B or C, whatever point that is, coming out of the turn, and my going around it wasn't as fast, that would suck. I mean, yeah, maybe pull it in. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. Hey, <laughs> listen, you, you can. You <laughs> might want to try to sit and deny it, but no, anyone no, that raced you or anyone who watched the races know that you did it. Yeah, it's not. And, and I'm a fan. It was planned out to do. It just turned out like so. If uh, so, what dad and to answer that question about some of that is because so when you're locked in to do something that's just going to happen, there's. So uh, in some senses that there are no excuses, that their second place is unacceptable. There's some things that just aren't going to happen and that this is how you live that dream, you know, the, that weekend, the whole approach to it. So there were for four years, the way I looked at it, that I knew that everybody was going to lose and it was messed up, but. It's, you know, you're just, that's just how this, I'm writing this story. 
But well, there's I'm a lot of truth. Like there's a lot of truth to you. It's it, there's a lot of truth to that story. And I didn't win all the time. I mean, in our time, like for example, I used to like this one show, One Life to Live. Richie used to watch General Hospital. So <laughs> it's funny because they played different times. So Richie would call me up in the morning, you know, before I'd even get training or whatever. And Richie would say, What happened on General or whatever show it was, you know? And I'd say, Yeah, such and such, that whatever. And and then he'd make bets <laughs> with his friends at home that I, oh, she's leaving them, man. She's leaving them. And you know, Richie. Rich, you know, call me back later. I get a hold. Hey, thanks, man. Thanks. thanks. I, I cannot. You're fucking with us, right? I, I can't. Yeah, I cannot <laughs> believe. I cannot <laughs> believe what's going on right now. This no freaking no, way. It's real. This, yeah, no. Can't be. No, he, he went, there's nothing foul about it. it just yeah, and we, and you guys were sitting and putting curlers in each other's hair <laughs> and uh, yeah. feeding no, each other no, ice cream. No, no I, you know, there's no way. I don't believe any of that. So my point. I know, but I had a problem understanding like one with somebody's pants that say Jesus saves or, and I was like, I kind of knew because I, I, you know, I, I, I love Jesus. I like God. You know, I knew my parents, you know, I, but I didn't know the whole story really. You know, I, I wasn't really so much a Jesus freak as I am today or a knowledgement of them. Yeah. But I respected that too. Until I, when I found out, I was like, wow, that, that was pretty cool. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Hell, it's a better story than General Hospital. I'll give you that. So I was trying to get that thing. I would take my recorder and I would tape my show because I had to go now, right? My show would be on and I would tape that and I would go to my trails and ride my trails, do my training for the day, come back home, probably have lunch. And then, uh, you know, get ready for dinner. Maybe it was workout time. Maybe I was going to knock off 500 sit-ups. Maybe, you know, I was going to go do some starts or something, yeah. And then uh, I, I just wanted that Trans Am. You know, I wanted one of them. It was my, I wanted one. And so... Um, there, there were already three of them up there in Northern California. They didn't need to have any more of them. I, I, but that I get it. The kick in the balls is sad because it took every... It took the sport down, bro. When that dream was taken, when Paperboy was taken from us, really, guys? Yeah, you know, I feel you there. I, I do. Really? Uh, I, I do I feel mean, for the pros. I wanted to wake up saying, "Yes, I'm the baddest man on the planet. Come take me now." You well, know, you... If you want some? Come get some. There was a time if they said, "Whoever thinks they're the most talented bike rider on the planet, stand up." If anybody stood up, I'd tell him to sit down now. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. Sit down. But well, you back I know that wasn't really true, but at some point I could embarrass anybody in a 30 foot circle. You know? There's truth to that. Yeah. There's, there's that. Yeah, dude. There, I mean, there was there uh, there was a there was a I didn't make it up, but if that tree was there, I'd ride that too. Now <laughs> they're either doing flips off the tree. I didn't have cars to do that. They they've excelled past. You know, I'm like impressed. But and I think in our time, um, you know, it was bad because it was badass because the dream was alive. You know, like really alive. And I think that BMX has gotten to a point where those tracks. It's just insane to think that that's what we're going to do today. Money's good and all, but it could die out there on that one there pretty easy. Hey, Ronnie, you, you, you touched on training and going and training and riding your trails. I'm curious, man, were you a uh, solo cholo or did you have guys that you rode with and trained with, or did you mix it up? You and your brother, how did, how'd that go? So I learned how to do it myself. I was born at the right time. I think that I was smart enough to know that I wasn't, I didn't, how do I say this? It's not that I, I didn't think I was the best because I knew I was the best. Okay? But, but, but um, I knew that everybody else was better than me on any given day too as well. Okay. So it was, it was a 50, 50 chance that, you know, I was going to win, kind of. And I had respect for everybody else. Just, 
you know, it, not because you maybe somebody in the grandstands talking shit, you know, Gary Ellis and his little crew is up in the grandstands. You know, I could hear them when I'm going around the track and they're talking shit. And then I know I get to race them in double A later on today. I'm like, your bitch ass ain't getting shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I might have had a hard lap and I, my heart, my, and my chest might have been pounding running that soft track or something for a buck 50, you know. <laughs> Maybe I had to get through Neil Allen and Neil Allen was winning one of his buddies or something, you know, and the pressure would be on me because I would actually look, go see how much was pro open first moto. How much was it main, you know, cruiser. So I'd add everything up and I never looked for what second place was. So when I got on the gate, if it totaled out to $2,310, I knew that even though this might, moto might be, but I didn't even know what it was to me. Every lap I did was $2,310. Okay. Yeah. I knew that if I lost anything else, I wasn't getting the double contingency and I need back to back triples. <laughs> and, you know, Tammy's going to be happy. I'm happy. Everybody's happy. Yeah. I remember sitting at home one time. She was like, Oh, you can't ride your cruiser. And I'm like, why? Or she goes, she goes, Ronnie, she's I probably said, sit down. Go and talk to you. <laughs> you know, she's like, you, you gotta, you know, you do good in cruiser. She says, I'm not saying you don't do good in 20. She said, you should not practice on your cruiser. You know, you should just ride that 20 inch focus. And then later I was like, I picked up that magazine. I she read this thing because I was like, Yeah, if I want on 20 inch, these races coming up, it'd look good, you know. <laughs> it was good for my resume, you know. This is good money. Good money. <laughs> Speaking of 20 inch, I want to go back to uh, you were one of the first people I saw with a that you could look on, on at the gate and see that your frame was longer than anyone else's. That your back wheel on those small ABA gates, your back wheel just about fell off the back end. Yeah. And with that famous slingshot start of yours, sometimes you're you know, in practice, I would watch it would almost come off the gate. Um, were, what was behind your geometry that you made on your custom bikes? Yeah, so by the time I got to choose, Carlo was already kind of choosing it for me because he'd be building, moving things, you know, a quarter inch here, a millimeter here. But it would always come down at, the, at that point when somebody else finally taught me what I needed, I, this is what I needed, that was cool, you know, because you didn't really have to worry about that. He wouldn't really necessarily take you down the wrong road because, you know, I mean, that's why Terry was so good with what Terry had because – you know, Carlos saw that in him and he, you know, lengthened this, do that and mm. kind of work, you know. So so you're saying Carlo from Boss is the one that really came up with these long frame designs and it was you and Terry Tanette that really took advantage of it. Yeah. And the other people too, Charles knew that, you know, that bike he had. So when he got the Rev Core, he was really good on the Rev Core. It was basically a copy of his Boss. You know, once you got on a Boss, nothing else was really going to, if Carlo put time into you, that means that he, you know, did the cranks just right. You know, the, everything was going to really fit good with that weld and that bucket of heat treat was probably a fresh gap to, you know, two and a half gallons of the pure, you know, what he needs and the temperature's right. He knew what he was doing, man. In that bike, if you got that bike, you, it, now today you have to have a carbon fiber or, or something, even comparative. I mean, I'm sure the GT guys are doing that, you know. But a real good race bike really shouldn't be lasting more than six months anyway. Mm. Not in my case. I'm beating the shit out of that thing. You keep <laughs> up with those guys? Those I, I, guys in hand. No, Mike. You know, I've had to follow you before. It was I, in the Hill. You'd see that you lose. And, you know, you. it's just whether you're a prize racer or not, you're trying to win. You've already won before. Or you know that second place – in, I mean, 500 bucks wouldn't be a bad purse to take home for that Sunday event. But, you know, Cruiser was probably that if you won. Yeah. And so, you know, Cruiser always counted because, you know, that'll pay for that hotel that weekend. If you won Cruiser one day, that cash. Yeah. Hey, you know what I heard? Cruiser I mean, counts. Had to pay for it, cruiser right? count. I heard Cruiser <laughs> counts, bro. It does. It did. But I think that, like, Todd Slavic, he kind of got robbed because he was the first number one pro cruiser ever officially but that, really? year, that year he won it was 86 and we're going to get to some of those details in a minute we're getting there i like we're it our way into 
where no I, I, I didn't know that about Todd Slavic and I, yeah. and, and I and I think the world of that guy he's awesome um yeah, great writer know. super stylish and a, just a great guy but I I didn't know that he won cruiser number one he got good now there's a story okay and the story ends kind of where that began right there that was the, oh, close, the two years out of three or the two years that it took to make up those three seasons that Ronnie Anderson ruled and became the winningest BMX on right there. And that's when it died. They took that Anderson name and shamed it. But it wasn't me doing it, okay? I didn't do it. My dad, our family, they was pretty bad. I'm not saying that the Anderson family and BMX hasn't done anything for the sport. Oh, because they have, okay? But they done it their way, okay? They didn't do it the way it was set up, the dream was set up. They didn't want to pay the bill. They quit, okay? They were quitters. They quit. Who quit? Bernie Anderson, Clayton John. They quit. But the point is, is like, <laughs> that was my sister on the other side over here. She's like, calm down. I don't no, no, don't me. tell her I to be. I caught myself. I caught no. myself already. <laughs> don't, don't calm down. Trouble. Shut your mouth. I'm in not no. in trouble. Yeah, nobody <laughs> wants to talk to Mellow Ronnie. We want crazy Ronnie. Yeah, I know, but we'll <laughs> you know what my point was my point was so we're sitting in this room. So the whole Pete Lon Karavich thing, it's really a good story. Okay. The whole thing, how it adds up is really good. So in 84, after the race, we're over here in Oregon. Okay. I'll bring it down. We're in Oregon after the race, Bob Madrano, RC Olderman, uh Pistol Pete, and myself were uh, enjoying some uh some more cow bong hits after the race yeah. and you know, john carr walks up into the deal there right so i'm trench coating the bong like why but whatever so why is john here but yeah i guess you can smell it i don't know i don't i don't remember saying anything really i just remember him coming in and then leaving and us smoking <laughs> more <laughs> right? and so then uh, i remember going to the world cup and i, I you and i won that weekend I won two out of the three, sir. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Congratulations to you. Thank you. Thank you. I think I won $336 more than you that day. Open was. Cruiser. Yeah, but Cruiser doesn't count. Cruiser <laughs> counted was 5000 Yeah. No, it was, uh, it was a great weekend. Yeah. If you get second, it's $2,000. I kind of, I, I, it was funny thing because I said to myself, yeah, I kind of wonder what it would be like to get second. I didn't really mean that. But um, I do do that because I do it in another way. Whereas if you thought about, well, if I lose today, how are you going to feel when you get home? So you really had to try to lock into focus no matter what it took to make it happen. Right. Well, going back to the story. So yeah. you you and Madrano, Bob Madrano, Skyway <laughs> rider, R.C. Alder, R.C. Alderman was fantastic. The ACS Z rim, you know, ad. The bendable buddy put it in the freezer. It was good. Yeah. <laughs> yep, great he guy. Was like nobody's business. R.C. was fun to hang around with. You know, we Dude, every great jumper. The races, we would all try to hook up in a Walnut Creek. There was a group of us, and we would just go ride like you guys. You know. Yeah. I that mean, you, like six, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. You, you, you three guys. Madrano, you and RC, you were three great jumpers. And and not enough people know about that about you. You're a great jumper. Okay. Is it wait, wait, is that the end of the story? Yeah. So so you're 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 who's the fourth? <laughs> yeah, who was the fourth? I forgot. Who's this? Oh, the fourth guy. Yeah, yeah. Pistol. Oh, pistol. Oh, and so you're that. you're you're somewhere yeah. ripping bung loads. Yeah. And and John Carr walks up. Yeah. And then, so you hide the bong in your trench coat. I don't know why, but yeah, I'm going to hide it. I think I got a corn pipe up here too. I don't know. <laughs> Gosh. And so, and so then John leaves. And then what was the rest of the story? I think Stu won that day. So I, I end up going. Yeah, it's good. Thanks, Mike. So, and uh, that's, that's the idea. So we, uh, we, I went to the uh, world cup or yeah, the world cup. Right. Yeah. And, I remember after the race, I was uh, called upstairs. We went to uh, Hoffman Estate, zero nine. After that, and hung yeah. out for July weekend. And with I think Kevin and Kevin and Owen Shepman from zero nine. Yeah, I think we went over to um, 
Gosh, I think we were somewhere MBL was next Orlando or someplace where I didn't win the race after, but I'm sure you were there, you know, trying to back up that double A. I don't know if it worked for you, but you know, winning the worlds, you know, they know they didn't want to give up nothing that weekend after I couldn't, you know, I think I maybe a couple seconds or thirds, maybe. But I mean, you know, I tried, you know. <laughs> but that's just it was tough. But I remember being at the office. And they called me upstairs. It was like maybe, say, I don't know, it was a pretty decent-sized place. Maybe, I think at that point, no, nah, it was a small place, but they had an upstairs. And I remember going up, and because uh, I just joined the team. and Z Zero nine. Yeah, That's Owen right. called me upstairs, so I'm like, yeah, okay. So I go up, and he says to me, he goes, Ronnie, he says, you're not on the point list schedule here. He says, what, what, what happened? And, and I said, well, I should be. He goes, you're number one or two, aren't you? And I said, well, yeah, you know, maybe one or two points. I don't know, something. Yeah, what's up? <laughs> you know, and he says, well, you're, um, you're not on the list. And uh, he goes, well, he goes, I'm, I'm going to call ABA. He says, uh. I'll call you back up and let you know what's going on. Hmm. So I went outside and started hanging out, whatever we were doing. I think we were looking at the pad machine at the time. It was pretty neat. And I just remember that. But, um, yeah, they called me back upstairs and said they uh, took my points away from me because I didn't fill out a membership. That's crazy, man. That's crazy, dude. It's so crazy because you see now, like, you can look at the points yeah. and you – you can see where it says that, you know, member signature required on the membership, like, yes, sir. <laughs> you know, but they still, but they're still listed in the points. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I went through an era where if you got a nag 10 in an amateur class, you couldn't race pro. <laughs> that was a rule for Ronnie. They, 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 I got kicked real hard, but let me, let me just finish this one here. This, so, they took my points away. But if you look in the magazine, if you because it's in the office, that's what the shame about this all is. It's been hiding, guys. And if I don't write a book about it or tell, then no one's going to know and they're not going to change it. A little well, tell us. Will go, the truth yeah. will go a long ways. Tell us the truth then. What, yeah, yeah. Tell us. We're, we're dying to know. You preach my paper boy. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So, so yeah. what happened? So I, so, so every month, Mike, we get a magazine and it would say you got to renew your membership. Okay. So when you go in the office, if you go say, I need 1984, uh, I need 1984, and there, it's somewhere in 84, it's going to, you know, people are going to, you know, every month, oh, I got to rejoin. You know, I'm going to lose my points. We didn't have internet then, right? Right. No. And, and, no. Nobody <laughs> wants to call all day. We didn't even have credit cards, really. Everything was pretty a check and send it off. Cash an envelope, pay for it. You know. right. At best. Otherwise, it was pay as you at the race, yeah? Yeah. That's right. Yeah, you showed up. That's you where you get, get yeah. points. Didn't you get beat today? Stu kicked your ass, huh? <laughs> yeah. So I want to make sure I understand this right. What you're saying is that you after I wasn't on the list, Mike, is what I'm saying. Okay? Yeah. Well, you had so you didn't fill out your form or didn't sign it or whatever, but you'd already accumulated all these points. Maybe and then the not, ABA throw one out since '81. I don't know. I, you know, really, I don't know. Maybe my sponsors did it or whatever. I'm going to be. I always had a card, you know. Yeah. yeah I, I, listen, I, I don't remember ever filling out an ABA form or NBL yeah, form. Yeah. I, I think our sponsors always did it for us. Right. But my point is, I want to make sure I got this straight. What you're saying happened was that you're a professional racer and you're, you are doing well and you have accumulated a lot of professional points and the sanctioning body decides because of this, this uh, small infraction, or you you missed some, some detail, or didn't check oh, a box that detail. they it's took not... your that they took your points away in the Why? middle. Of... Yeah, yeah. So that's what happened. Wow. So then I went on to win the next races of the year. I think I got second behind Pete or something one time. I always say that because sometimes I would win like five events and Pete would win one. I didn't always get six when I was hot, you know. Wow. 
Um, well, I, I, I do recall. When did they do that to you, Ronnie? Did they wait? What year was that? And, and how long into the season did they wait to like. So they told, so I knew that they took my points and we had more races to go. It was just the, the world champions just went. So I went on and won pretty good. I did some more wins and stuff. I thought, well, maybe, you know, if I win the grands, I could get an attorney and we could get this thing fixed, you know, we'll, yeah. we'll fix it. And so I was five minutes late for signups for the grands that year. And, uh, they wouldn't let me sign up, man. Five minutes, bro. Clayton said, no, nah, man, we shut the door, bro. Man. And wow. then I got to watch. Wow. I remember you. There were a lot of times that there were a lot of times that there was a scene in the infield with crazy Ronnie and Clayton John pointing fingers at each other and you guys had you guys had beef all the time. It seemed like a, a lot. Well, I don't know. You know, as a racer, you know, we cross that finish line. We're out of breath. We're trying to move along. We're we're prize racers. You know, we're racing for the money and fame and glory and the women. Rock and roll got us here. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was. You know, it was good. I used to love being on that plane, put in that cassette. It was fun. Good stuff. It was. It was yeah. well, again. So I just that jet lag. Go yeah. get some print on and be, get start getting ready. <laughs> I, I said earlier there were uh, there were a lot of times that you got DQ'd, uh, and a lot of times it, I think that sometimes it was just Clayton was mad at you for something else, and you got DQ'd. Yeah. There were there were some times that there were some questionable calls made that we the other pros would go, "Wow, why would he get DQ'd for that?" Minute ago. Yeah. yeah, I would. So I remember it's not just so much that I don't know as, as I look at Clayton just because I, you know, painted the picture. I'm ashamed of what he did. Okay. And what they did. And it's like one of the biggest, uh, I mean, I'm telling you the clock, this is where the, the clock got broken. This is where it's beginning and the end of it was for me. And as, as BMX as we all knew it. So it had its errors, but it had its faulties based on greed. You know, it's sad to say, but I'm just going to be honest with you. I really think what Todd Huffman's doing, even though he's coattailing that insurance, that they're not telling him anything. He has the opportunity to give back to everybody, make these events pure, get them motorcycles, get them cars a couple times a year, or whatever it's going to take to make something, bring back that spirit and let these kids have it what they deserve. Let cards fall or fall, uh, lie as they fall. You know, I don't need no corn and no nut trick. You know, I want to win and know that I'm driving home, living that dream like you and your mom, Eric. I hear you, man. <laughs> hey, you, hey, don't hey. try to give me a Ford Mustang and send me down the road. He's dying that thing. He's hey, dying man. in a tough time in a Trans Am. Hey, I, I I hear you, brother. I I I'm with you, man. I, I yeah. I, I understand the spirit. And I understand. I understand the message that you're saying, which is, man, let's. Um, what is it going to take to get it back to that to what it was? Because we lived. Hey, man. The, the truth be told, I say this all the time, man. Those guys that are racing BMX now, they're having their moment, and BMX is special to them, right? And so we're it, and and so I don't like to. I don't like to badmouth what they as families are enjoying, but it was different. And I do think that we lived and we raced and we got to experience the glory years of the sport. I agree. I don't I think it's going to get, that. it won't get to back. It won't get the way it was before. I mean, it's just not, no, it won't, doesn't but it can seem, do yeah. It can do this. It can do what was approved by grandpa and dad. Who can we could do, we could fix it. It could be fixed. All it needs is a board of guys, a group of guys like us, and somebody, everybody plays the right part. And send that down the cubicle. <laughs> Fire that thing down the hall. <laughs> yeah. And then you don't make the rules up as you go along, you know. You in well, accounting, you have to file it one way the whole year, and that's it. You know what I think though? I, I truly look, I think that uh, you know, I, I don't want to, um, 
I have a lot of friends at USA BMX. I'll put you all in an awkward position. No, no, no. I don't, I don't, hey, not me. I don't feel awkward because Uh my opinion and the truth is my opinion and the truth, right? And so it is what it is. So um, I do have friends at USA BMX. I do think that they provide a platform right now for a lot of kids to ride bicycles. I think that's, um, I think it's good that that they have that stuff, man. But, um, Man, I lost my train of thought as well, bro. Um, <laughs> well, I'll, I'll jump in there. Listen, they're the only people that provide a place to race uh, that right was, now. That was my point. That my okay, point one. was going to be that. My point is, yeah. I know it's crazy, right, Hollywood? Yeah. My point is, I do believe that the sport was better when there was multiple sanctions. I really believe that, man, because nothing holds you accountable more than somebody looking over your shoulder that if you don't do it better, you're going to get your ass beat, right? The reason you went fast, Ronnie, because you knew Pete was training too. And so you were like, hey, man, I got to stay, I got to stay sharp. And right now, USA BMX doesn't have anybody competing with them. But back in the day, um, I know that, uh, so like the boat mic one, okay? So let's just say, I'm just kind of going to go in there. So yeah. That was, you know, that was, do you think that ABA bought that? Do you think Bob Harrow had anything to do with it? Do you think, so what I'm saying is that BMX was influenced by the players that were playing the game. So like yesterday I, or the other day I'm watching, or yeah, it could have been. <laughs> so the Patterson's interview and hmm. they just couldn't get the product, you know, they, they, could, they had a demand if everybody wanted them. Right. I, if I didn't, my boss wasn't running. I did on one of them Patterson. It was on. <laughs> you know, <laughs> That was fine. I had, you know, Brian, what was he, six, two or three or something as he was growing into that, 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 you know, kick your ass mode. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He was rough, man. He was rough. <laughs> yeah. He was stuck. He, so out of all the, I, I, I would have to say that Brian probably put up the, he was the best. I thought like he, you know, so, so Eddie was actually, would win the Nora Cup, but I think Brian won it the next year. So, like and said, there were 74, 75, or 75 and 76. So Brian got passed, but Brian didn't say anything about coming back and winning it the next year. But at dinner, he told me on that invite, Eric, he said that, yeah, he passed me in the last turn. I, like, I don't remember it that way. You know, I know Eddie was the man. Don't get me wrong, Brian, but you, Brian was, you would get back, 11, 12, he had that R and R, he wasn't playing. I was like, I gotta race him. <laughs> that was on. I was scared, you know. I was like, man. <laughs> man. So by RC Cola Race of Champions, I was like a twelve-year-old. My dad turned me expert, and then said, "Oh, well, you could race novice at the race." But they meant, "Oh, you race as the age you are." Instead, of, they said class that you qualify as, not, and that meant uh, if so. If you're novice or ex, wait, wait, wait a minute. So. If you qual if you were 13 at the race, but you qualified as a 12 year old, you would race 12 novice at that race. Yeah. But if you turned expert, you'd have to race 12 expert. You know, I get that. I dad read it wrong. Yeah. So me expert anyway, talked me into I'm like, yeah, let's do this. I remember qualifying. I got a picture between Brian and Eddie. I didn't make it to the main, but it was a semi and I was between them. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> Yeah, you I got you, that, you that three was, guys were so fast for so long. Yeah, De- decades you were fast. Yeah, those guys, those guys though. I remember, like Lee Medlin, like, and then uh, there was Will Skirto was pretty tough. Yeah, and then um, there was a couple people. Uh, no, a lot of people. I mean, Mike Polson. Uh, I could go on forever, and and this, but the guys that we had trouble with, like. Sheldon Cam, if you say Sheldon Cam, like Brian's right now, if he's listening, he's like, yeah, 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 oh, Sheldon, yeah. Uh, <laughs> there there was a couple of them that put the the real BMX into our, you know, kept our blood going. Yeah. You know, that very essence of somebody, Sheldon Cam had a break by his thumb, like the, the sea dudes are, you know, our jet skis are today, sea dudes. Yeah. I'm a I'm a sea dew guy, not a jet ski he, guy. So, so he, he had he had his brakes like this yeah. on the thumb. 
Really? The brake was on the thumb. Of course, you, I guess you don't need that anyway. The brake, you didn't really you weren't going to go any faster with a brake on. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny is I just uh, was talking to a uh, a boyhood friend, Richard Kerr, and he was telling me about, you remember lean, mean Leo Green from back in the day? He had he had on his old torker, he put a motorcycle throttle with the brake cable going through the motorcycle throttle. No, he wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> I asked Richard, are you sure he did that? He goes, yeah, he did that. He tried that out for a couple of races. I was like, <laughs> But why? But why? Why do you have your thumb yeah. thumb break? Why? why? <laughs> Carlo and I developed a fork one time where it was supposed to be like a shotgun where you could lock it in gear, the forks would go into each other, put you four, four to six, eight inches ahead, right to where the wheel would back to the frame. You'd be in lock position. You could back up, get that slingshot way back, get comfortable back here, get a little balance, hold the brake, and then just take off when you just wanted to go. And then when you got there, you could get in the gate drop, you could smack that handle like that and knock that fork into gear, uh, whether it be a spring or a CO2, and lock it. And now you're already, you know, six, eight, ten inches ahead of somebody pulling, you know. That's crazy, man. <laughs> Momentum, you know, I mean, how, that's the only way you're going to beat that sling, get that slingshot today. It, where it would be effective today is to just back up and pull your best Sean Texas. Sean's <laughs> 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 already turned, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> you know, hey, Mike, you, somebody used to just start sideways and put the real <laughs> I Hollywood was, was Hollywood. You were you were the sideways starter. Sideways. What are you guys doing? And, you know, and I sat on Sean's bike too. I was like, this. That's why, huh? <laughs> I think I thought about Sean. If if you pull back and then you turn your bar so your wheel is crooked and you keep going straight, you're you're taking up four inches, right? You're getting four inches ahead start. Yeah. No, I I saw that. I think he explained that to us. <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know why you would run your front wheel crooked. If that concoction and any advantage in BMX is that's what you're looking. You're going to need that. Yeah. Need that. That's, that's well, so was funny. was your advantage? What was it ever an advantage for you before? Right before the pro main, the last pro main, you would always ride out to their first jump. Yeah. Do a do a one eighty on top of the on your back wheel and then ride back down. I could get disqualified for this now, remember? So, <laughs> hold on, hold on. so the reason why I brought that up is because Carlo had this spring thing and it went through the center of the head tube and then it split on the forks, okay? Went down the forks and came out to this, uh, uh, where it was, so the fork was three quarters uh, chromoly, weighed two and a half pounds and then it was all aluminum, like space shuttles guy did it, some space, you know cnc stuff and it he did it like a rear end of a motorcycle where it just kind of cocked in and then um it worked that way the but fork flexed you're saying it went down through the center of the tube and then just split in the fork like we always wanted wow you know, today that's the thing like they just had like just had a little guiding with a couple of those little rollers you know it was perfect stuff well, speak. We'll have that. These guys will be springing around and just getting a flip, bro. Like a flip. Was well, there was there was a few things that were just crazy, Ronnie signatures, and yeah, one of them one, one of them was to always go in front of the main, yeah, in front of the pro main yeah. and do a, a dual we you know a little three sixty on the first jump, come back and get in the gate. Yeah, so yeah. I was trying to sell you something. Okay, <laughs> we knew that not everybody was going to take it and buy into it. But I was trying to scare you into thinking, you know, you was already going to lose before you lost. Well, I just remember uh, <laughs> sitting in the gate at Gilly. I think it was Gilly's. Be real about it. And you it's did it. You did the 360 off. and you fell. And I was, I, I can tell you, that was the biggest distraction for me because I was like, <laughs> okay. Yeah, man. Well, I, 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 probably would have, I only try it some, you know, if it's not respectable, I didn't try to play that, you know. I mean, oh, I well. I got my bike stolen from me one time and a guy said to me and I heard him say, Oh, I didn't steal your bike. He says, no, I wanted to race the best, you know? And I thought to myself, bro, not only do I know you stole my bike, 
but you knew I'd kick your ass anyway, you know? What? I told <laughs> that person, that person, yeah. Yep. He knows I'm telling him. He don't like the whole thing about the bike thing, but there was a few people that stole my bike that weekend, so shame hmm. on them. Where was, that up, Ronnie? Where, where was that at, Ronnie? Yeah, I had to race Richie's bike. And freaking, I high load, man. And freaking, because I was on Skyway then. And so I did a high low on Richie's bike. And then Brent somehow, leg slips over and elbow hits me. And I get squirrely. I was going to go right by him and win the Worlds. I remember coming across that finish line. And Brian and I were just racing hard for third place. And I got him, though. His brother won the Worlds. I got third on Richie's bike. Those guys stole my bike. They don't like this story, but you know what? Fuck them. And, and I'm telling you this, though, because I remember being in Fremont Raceway. I had my head down on my pad, and I looked over. I remember Carl Cleeton from Vallejo. He had was putting on my sprocket, and he was using this drill to make my uh, red line cranks fit. And um, I remember looking over, and I'll tell you why he did that. Frank, Frank ruined his career based on me if you ask me because he just was an idiot frank post yeah i just he more talent so much talent but just dumb as a just stupid right and then you thought i was stupid or and stupid here today no hold on frank was another level another level and i that's funny because i don't i'm trying to push at it because uh it's live for us not memorex you know and it's exciting <laughs> to out. we're delivering this you know it's the truth, and it's fun. It's good. It's a good story. Well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm looking I'm, down. I got my head down, and I'm looking at these pranks. This is two weeks after the the, the Tropicana, and I look down and I see that drill hole that Carlo uh, missed and put on there. I was like, because I was there watching it, and I saw it later, and I saw him. Got my head down, and there's my cranks. And and whose bike? Whose bike was that on? Frank's bike. It was on Frank's bike. Oh. We, we get there, and I remember driving into the Tropicana, and you had to drive around. They drove around, and all of a sudden, they stopped once. Somebody got out of the car, took my bike off the back. of. They said that the bikes were slipping, so that's why they stopped. Okay. I mean, yeah, I was smoking. And I'll get, I need my medicine now. <laughs> the point is, they get out, and then we get pull up to the front, and my bike's not there. Oh, they sold my oh. for the race, bro, to have money in their pocket for whatever they were doing. So it was more than one person was in on it, but there's those are the ones that did it. It's, mm. fucked, it's fucked up, but it is what it is. Man, they they were afraid to race me. You got jacked, bro. Wow, they was afraid to race me. They jacked you, Ronnie. <laughs> they jacked me. <laughs> Shit, that's just some of that NorCal love. Yeah, it's NorCal love. So what <laughs> happened was the reason why uh, it, it gets better, but the reason why that Frank Frank kind of did that shit. So I was I'm 15, 16 years old. We're at Crazy Course Campground in Cameron Park, Sacramento, California. Uh, 1981. We got Ozzy Osbourne, Crazy Train running, and uh, I remember the race was the coolest. But I remember the night before the race. I was walking the track and this girl come up to me and grabbed me, man, with one of these powder puffs. And she took me into the tent, you see. Frank ended up finding out. I don't know why we would even say Frank found out because she's 15 years old, bro. You know, what is he, 19, 20 at the time or some shit? 27, 30. Trying to claim all the women on the track. Yeah. So I thought, I, I mean, if I would have known this was so-and-so's girlfriend, that would have been nice to at least know that that's who was giving me the bobos, you know. <laughs> okay? <laughs> but this it was just Jill, and that was oh, Hold on. Good. Hold on a second. It giving me the bobos? Watching <laughs> the girl on the road, you know, I got pulled into the tent. It was nice. <laughs> and I put yeah. the red giving me the bobos i just gotta hang on to that for just a second because i got a story at the world's night before too it was great, it was great. couldn't have won without it. <laughs> I couldn't have won without it god bless you paul gosron <laughs> oh, so good oh in my the, gosh in the boss van it was a boss van story 
the oh, boss I imagine van. there's some I imagine there's some boss van stories. Dude, I can... that boss van could everybody talks about the SE bus, but I'm telling you what, man, if the boss van could speak, I think it would give that SE bus a run for its money. No, I think if the boss man could if the boss <laughs> van could speak, it would cough. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It'd be coughing from the smoke. I, I mean, we had fun. And of course, you know, we got, we did get lucky. There were some goggles out there that, you know, loved us. And it was fun. It was fun. <laughs> you, got your share, you got your share of Bobos. Yeah. I told John Cruz the other day, I said, I said something about a motorhome and bring in some uh, goggles. And, but I said, full of goggles, full of goggles. An RV, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> So good. Oh man. Okay. I love it. I love it, man. The details. Well, hey, I so, we yeah, go I, ahead. Go ahead. I regret that day doing that because that, that 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 even happened. Yeah. But um, my point is is that he took it out on me from every day from then on out. He was right. the coolest guy. I I fucking loved him because he was a rebel and he could roll. You know what I mean? Oh man, he could roll. He, could roll. he, he was kind of cool. Frank was a little rough. But when I had to hang out with Frank at times, okay, because he's with my other friends. Yeah. I mean, one day he talked to me and he said, Ronnie, let me see that. He goes, we're all on a ride. You know, it just happens all the time. And Frank just happens to be there. I got to deal with it, right? We're racing all the time, but now I got to deal with this shit. But I remember once, because I would try to avoid it. You know, I really kind of would. I didn't like, it's not that I didn't mind sharing. I remember at the end trying to be friends with him many times when we were racing and I'd buy I'd buy, I'd buy him a bus ticket to come with me. Maybe it was even after these, after some of the tough times. We'd get to the hotel, and before I know it, I'm looking at a screwdriver thinking wanting to stab him. I'm like, fuck, I got, I, you know, I, I think I'm leaving 50 bucks on the table and telling him good luck. And I go get my own room, and you're on your own, buddy. You know, of course, he's not winning. He's not getting anything. I'm not letting him win. And we're not hanging out no more. You know, it's just, Frank used me to that kind of limit in life, you know. Dude, I, I remember person, I'm sure that you know he kind of regrets it too that Ronnie has these kind of stories, but you know, fuck, I don't <laughs> I'm not trying to open up all the closets, but uh, that one there is kind of funny at the end of the day. But Frank, Frank was the baddest. Frank was the baddest for a minute. And then I think if he would have wouldn't have took it out on me, his that little you know girl, he would have went a lot further. Dude, I remember you guys. Crazy. I remember he didn't buy crazy. me after that. Once you foul me, he grabbed my Walkman. I let him use the walk, look at the Walkman. Brand new one of them silver thin ones, you know, headphones. I probably got ACDC in there or maybe Death Leopard or something. And he looks at it and he goes, hum. And he just hum, throws it in the air. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. I like, think I won double A last week to get that. Wow. <laughs> Dude, I saw I saw you guys at a race in uh, um, J- Janesville. I think it was yep, Wisconsin. It was, and you guys took each other out. I didn't he, take him out. He stopped me from a triple. Kind of jumped off his bike and grabbed me. Yeah, and he yes. ran down the track and tackled you. Yes, yes. I, <laughs> oh I couldn't God. believe it. Huh? He did so. He did that to me in Utah too. Okay, I, I was there for Utah. I saw the Utah one. Yeah, and he ripped the skin off my finger, bro. He went around that berm so hard, he railed that second turn and just like ran me over. And it <laughs> just, my hand just boof and ripped the skin off my finger. I don't know who won. I want to go back and look at that third moto and see how it really did end up finishing up. Wow. <laughs> Uh, Tinker and I did see that, and I I'm sure I got the best of him because I whooped his ass all weekend. Obviously, <laughs> funny thing is we were on tour together with some guys. Bob would drove to Utah with this group, and uh, well, so what happened was we were on the road. We were where we Jill actually flew in. She's in the back seat of the car. And me and my buddy are driving. We're going to the next race, and Frank. All of a sudden, grabs me, puts me in a headlock, and he's choking me. Okay? <laughs> and um, my buddy pulls the car over and pulls Frank out and pulls throws Frank up against it. And says, you're getting out when we get there. We just pick Jill up, you know. So we're driving. We're in Waterloo, Ohio, when this happens. And we pull over. 
he locks the brakes up, stops like a scene in a, uh, just a comedy central and look up and I look up and it says Jill and Frank's diners. Oh. <laughs> we kicked them out of the car. <laughs> kicked them out of the car. Mind you, I paid for everything we did on that trip. Gave I gave the guy extra money to go home for gas. I had a good. We had a good finish to, up tour. We had a good time. Man, but I always wanted Frank to be there. You know, just at that, that, that level, he was just a cock block. Well, that was the thing that blew me away about that Janesville deal because I think you guys were traveling together. No, we weren't. Trust me, it only happened a few times. <laughs> I mean. I don't mean to be condescending about it, but fuck. Yeah, he was a, he was a bitch. <laughs> you know what? I'm not afraid of him today because at the end of the day, my foot's getting fixed. You want to dance? Nigga, we could put some gloves on and go to the <laughs> middle of the cell. I'll straight arrest that boy with a right and left. Oh, man. <laughs> I love it. Dude, I, I, Hollywood. You got to bring boxing that. gloves to Frogtown. Exactly. <laughs> and I think we should, you know, really, because when you think about it, there's a couple of people I'd like to punch in the face, too. But, you know, you got to have cojones enough to put a, you know, like, man, I put the gloves on. Right. And then go. Yeah. Get them. Oh, come on. Clayton's old now. You can't punch him. Oh, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Back then, I did. I kind of did. I, even Bernie was too old, so he's older now. Okay, he's older now. Uh, but the funny thing is, is that he he will get a cut in a couple clips of this, and it's neat for him to know now that I finally get to tell him <laughs> that you filed bankrupts on me. You owed me fifty thousand dollar value. You gave me thirteen thousand out of fifty, and you only had seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars on that bond. I won fifty thousand. We add that up. It's roughly nearly 6% of your business for your life. See what I'm saying? That you took from me. So it's about time you give it back to the racers, get your Trans Ams right, get a couple number one pros, and you start giving it back. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> hey, hey, Ronnie, speaking of number one pros, man, uh, I, clearly we wouldn't be able to, to get off of this podcast without talking about the rivalry between you and Pete. Because yeah, it was, it really it, wasn't a rivalry, though. You know, there really wasn't. Mm. Well, that that it, comes. I'm surprised because it seemed. I will tell you, as a, a young amateur growing up and watching, that mm -hmm. was a that was a thing that we were like, okay. "What so, is going to happen next?" You mean what you mean is when you say because I would say Brian Patterson and I. I mean, in my opinion, that was the rivalry at the Gold Cups. Um, Brian was would win a world championship. Okay. Then he would come home and race like a Merced Gold Cup. Uh, there'd be 30, 375 first and 20 inch, no contingencies, yeah. but you'd get like a hundred and you'd win another couple hundred bucks for Cruiser and Open. And your world champion is here, okay, with his brother. And it's like, yeehaw, let's get this. <laughs> okay. Well, and what what was it? What I made racing before. against Ronnie? What made what made racing against Ronnie so special? With so, Brian, I think it was the, with Brian Patterson and Ronnie. It was that you were both, you know, to us, you were from the same neighbor. You were both from Northern California. You raced along and you raced together against each other since you were kids. But what I think what Eric was saying is, you know, for a lot of us, we didn't see that. We saw it at the Nationals in the mid-80s, and it was you and Pete that yeah. seemed like there was always a clash. Okay, yeah. so here, you got to remember, you got to build this up, okay? First of all, now all of a sudden, we're out, we're out smoking, enjoying the race, right? The festivities, the fruits of the day, that's what we did, you know? Mm. Right. Yeah, they're not always trying to test your heart. You know, I, I can't blame my my some of my uh, hey Escobar man. Let me join that class action suit on. <laughs> Look, you have to grow up sometime. You know, I experienced the eighties. I'm just going to keep it real. You know, but I think some of it was pushed. Some of the, some some bullshit. Um, I don't think it was it was fair. None of it was fair. It was live. They got to get away with it and do what they wanted. But you got to remember, you had somebody you guys consider the most talented. Now, all of a sudden, I have the opportunity to get on my bike and go on Letterman, let's just say, and gets me 360s right, get them one-handers, just 
shake the world with the fact. Let's get the next year's Trans Am winner. Who's going to be? Y'all's is going to sign up. Right. Everyone's going to be there. Mike, everybody backed off that wasn't going to get that Trans Am and that Pro Spectacular. But y'all showed up, though, still on them Friday nights. You know what they told me that day when I won that final third round main event? Me and my dad's in there. And uh, we're in the office. And I said, so, guys, I said, uh, I won $50,000 and you know it. And I said, what's going to be? How are we going to do this? He goes, oh, we can't pay you your money. And I said, well, yeah, you are, but how come you can't? How, or why, why is this? He said, well, because we spent the money on the Hall of Fame. All that money that came from the Pro Spectacular funds went to the Hall of Fame. So correct me if I'm right, they got to run a business, quote, right? Right? It's a business. Right. But we're going to start our Hall of Fame, and we can't pay you your money, though. Sorry. And so I said to him, I said, look, I said, I'll tell you what. I go, really, all I want is a Trans Am convertible, red or T-top, I don't care, automatic. It's so like I could see my girl's nails on that shifter, you know, for her, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, that's all I could see, you know, that and the Taco Bells, right? <laughs> that and the Torito. Sure, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> that's, that's so good. It's the good things in life. Nails, nails the on the shifter and it's Doritos, bro. Oh. They, brought, they brought back the Mexican pizza, huh? That's Washing right. it down with a 7-Eleven Slurpee. <laughs> yes. And that was the best, Mike. We could go in there and, and see how much contingency money we made, all Oz and everybody. Let me just say, I, I used to love going to Hollywood to go ride the Hollywood Hills, to go, to go train up some of those steep hills with Crazy Ronnie. And uh, that was, it was an intense workout. And, you know, it was all you could do just to keep him within eyesight when Crazy Ronnie would start sprinting up these huge Hollywood hills. And so a few times I went down there and, and, and rode with him. And, uh, and one time we went to, a, a, out in front of a bank, there was this huge ledge and Ronnie bunny hopped it. Yeah, and it was, it, it was insane. Um, and later they put it, I think they put it in the magazine, if I remember, but yeah, yeah, yeah. it was the world record at the time, but insane. We were doing 41s and this was before uh, uh, showtime. Cause I think he was getting like 52s. Now they're getting like, what, like seven feet or something. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know. I all I know, know all I know is what how whatever they're doing now, it doesn't <laughs> matter because that was up onto a concrete bank. And if you right. didn't make it, yeah, you really, would you would just was, break your frame in half. Yeah, you were hurting. Everything wasn't going to work out. There was no take two. <laughs> and exactly right, exactly right. But my favorite part, my favorite part of going up there to train with Ronnie, to ride with Ronnie, was for him to tell us the stories about who came into the seven at who came into the Seven Eleven that he worked at that that week. And I mean. Uh, I mean, Madonna had a crush on him. Sandra Bernhardt had a crush on him. That it was, was fantastic. Yeah, so um, from any given day, you didn't know what was going to happen. It depended on the shift that you had, but what an experience it was because in, in interacting with people, they had a little thing where one, the manager actually had a, a tape, and it was called Cups and Cups of Coffee, and um, it was piano music, you know? And uh, we got a Vans billboard down the street and uh, Dugan was on the team then. And I remember I was actually sleeping above the 7-Eleven, you know, for a minute there, <laughs> yeah, you know, up there with the asbestosis. <laughs> yeah, I never mean, days, oh, they're not supposed to be here on the radio. Oh, you're not to be there, you know? No. <laughs> there the asbestosis last night. No, I'm fine. But I can't. Oh, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> Who could show up in the morning and we, you know, we could, we could take down a couple of those that, you know, and uh, man, it was fun working there, but yeah, you never knew um, who was going to come in and the experience that you were going to have that day uh, in Hollywood. That was fun. I mean, and there's so many that I want to talk about a couple that I want, because I'm going to have some time. I, just like you, Eric, you said that uh, uh, 
Well, yeah, every one of these stars that I'm going to mention, they were doing the same thing, just not at the 7 Eleven. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, you know, so um, we're talking about pot, right? We're smoking a couple a couple fatties in the bathroom before work starts. Okay. <laughs> we're at the Rock and Roll 7 Eleven. And um, so, but uh, yeah, my point is, is that um, from any given moment, like you could have a thought, like, so I remember one day, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about uh, James Brown. All of a sudden, James Brown walks in. I'm like, what the, what? Okay. <laughs> and so like the day with Madonna, um, I remember I see Sandra Bernhardt. I'm walking out. Eric, you came that day. Yep. So me and Biggie are across the street, and uh, I think we went into the cooler and made some sandwiches or something. I don't think he wanted to smoke with me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he just made sandwiches. But I remember we went outside, and we're sitting in this parking lot. Now it's a car, a Ferrari store or something. But we're sitting in this parking lot, and Eric looks over at me, and he says, Ronnie, he goes, he goes could you imagine if we saw Madonna today? I looked at him and I just said, you know what? I go, stranger things have happened here. <laughs> I don't know if I opened up the gate to it or in, you know, what happened, but I know, I just know these things, right. That you, you put it into the possibilities it's done. Okay. Right. But you're just writing this like played out like life, whatever you're going through, you got to be able to accept the fact that that guy over there just might be, you know, the lead singer for Metallica and he just might be hanging out. I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah. Came in, took a look at the store, and then left. You know, anything he wants on the house, you know, and (laughs) kept going. But the other guys would hang out and drink and talk to us. He was saying they loved uh, Evil Knievel. So, you know, you didn't get all the kings, but you got some of his men, you know. (laughs) Uh, So, so I told him, I said, stranger things have happened. So, so. We go back to the store to get some, maybe some more people came. I don't even know, but I know that I were going outside and I, I, this girl goes under or looks at me and it's, it's uh, Sandra, Sandra Bernhardt. Yep. Sandra, and I go, Sandra, I said, uh, where's Madonna at? That was naturally what came out of my mouth. Cause like, I like want to see Madonna anyway, you know, <laughs> Sometimes in one day is not enough, you know, come on. <laughs> You did not come by the store when I got off at 12. <laughs> well, I had, I, your, I I had your Snorpy ready for you. What? <laughs> he left me. I'm free, you know? <laughs> but, um, yeah. So, uh, or I'm single now. Sorry about it. Tammy was hot, bro. She gave me baby. BMX. We, we rocked the world. And they killed it. It died there. But, um, you know, we still... We, stayed together and not i was still a winner when she left me so it wasn't so bad she left me with a little bit of you could get your shit together you know you fucked up with me and i'm gonna keep your kid <laughs> <laughs> that was rough you know yeah i can't imagine i went on to have three more with another woman and we broke up i i uh my friend uh, e40's brother uh, was my friend and um i told uh, well so uh matt dre you know so matt dre wrote in his song how he was banging my girl you know with my little three white boys that's how we broke up but i I just have no idea what you're talking about (laughs) i do i understand i I know you guys do (laughs) you lost me you lost me at merle haggard they go platinum and they break up with you when they go platinum okay (laughs) definitely you know, she she did it differently, but she went platinum too. You know, she she's a beautiful girl. Shut get the, shut that door. Don't open it again. Just don't open it again, Virginia. Yeah, they got me on call. They're taking care of me. There's no medication going on here. Like they just know that you know they probably if they're listening, they're listening at the wrong time. <laughs> they're trying to get in my business. That's my business. But yeah, she she's we're just storytelling, bro. Yeah, she's freaking yeah. beautiful. She, I have to speak up, you know. But uh, she was a beautiful person today. She, you know, I thought I had the hottest chick on the track. You know, why time flies by fast, you know. 
So there were a lot of ego things that made me me. And I had it for a good, you know, I think Mike, uh, uh, you know, you guys were all rough on me. Um, but I know during my heyday before ABA did their shit to me like they did, you know, BMX, not only was it the baddest place to be, but um, I was a BMF, a real BMF. Yeah. There's yeah. Ronnie, let me, Ronnie let, me at, let me ask you something. Uh, easily, Mike said in the beginning of uh, the pro main, you'd, you'd get out there and you'd do your thing. I mean, everyone could say you're the master of intimidation, right? Like you would try and get in anyone's head. Was there, was there somebody, and I don't know if you did it on purpose or maybe it was just a thing. Was there anyone that you almost found it a challenge to try and get in their head because you couldn't get in there? You know, it depends on how you look at it because you got to remember by main time, you're dealing with some guy, some lunatic that's got an ego that's going to raise this roof and go on to into the next plateau. I mean, we're, <laughs> we're living the dream here. You, you're trying, you know, so it's hard to say, like I had to humble myself, but every one of them scared the shit out of me. Honestly. I mean, I had, you, you got, you got, I mean, can I name a gate at a national in 84, 85 or six? Yeah. In a that wasn't exciting. <laughs> oh, they all were. I mean, it was awesome. Yeah. Dude, I know. I, when you guys were, I, I know oh. for me, man, being, you know, 15, uh, 14, 15, 16 and watch it. I mean, it was like, man, I couldn't get enough of it. Right. Like you watching a pro main absorb, Jeez. absorb, absorb, study, yeah. watch the best dudes, man. And Cause I, I mean, truly my goal was like someday, man, I want to get there. I want to be right. I want to race those guys. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it was just phenomenal to watch the battles, the, and the details in the like the little things that people don't see, the little body things, the little body checks, the elbows, you know, an under elbow or an over elbow, uh, tucking it in so it's it's locked and loaded so that when someone does make contact, you can push them off. Little things, man. That and I would study you guys because you guys were the masters at it. Because of the 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 type of racing we did in those tight corners and and tight confines. Yeah. There was so much little jujitsu going on in every corner. Uh, crazy. You know, it was funny you say that because I, I had to learn that from somebody else. But I think by the time your group got there and was teaching me my lessons, um, there was a couple maybe that were older than you. I'm not sure. Like Cecil was kind of different because once he left amateur and went into pro, you know, he had that kind of that pro cruiser threat. He was really good on both bikes. Yeah. Uh, but my point was so amateurs going yeah uh, by the time everybody beat me <laughs> yeah um you guys were super fast like you did definitely study did your homework oh for sure yeah you had to and um but i know that our era the the kind of like greg had a little bit of longevity pete had some long i was a, even though i raced in the 90s a little bit i was done like i said by 86 so when 87 come around you know really to be honest with you i i was still a great rider you know but first of all i got to take everything you know you got to build this thing up and then be told that it's not really true or i don't know it's hard i just when you win number one and you don't get your prize mm. like it's gonna it's gonna, it's gonna mm. that you. was a kick in the nuts yeah, yeah. how yeah. are you gonna go by how are you gonna show everybody that you're the best. Now we're going to take all of your resources from you. Mm. Well, that's what I was going to say. Everything that you got. <clears throat> that's what I was going to say, Ronnie was, um, you know, when, when the, the 84, 85, 86, 87, when you guys though, that's when I remember you and Pete, I mean, specifically to me, it was you and Pete. And then yeah. it was just like you guys were on this little level and then there was everybody else was kind of just maybe a little step below Patterson's were fast too, but I don't know, for some reason. And I don't know if it's cause 84, 85 and 86 that you're right. You're feeding Ronnie. Yeah. But after that, it seemed like, um, it, like you, like you were saying 87 on, it seemed like from a mental standpoint, like, like you said, and I didn't know if it was 
from sponsorship, support, or whatever? It, it had a lot to do with it. It had a lot to do with being able to purchase events, buy buy things, manipulate things. They were the FBI, and they were more under like an accounting uh, legitimacy where we really have to do our best in scoring. We when we print something, we have to do it and follow it this way. So they kind of went back, but they skipped to when it was convenient most for them. And it only affected one at the time, and that was me. Nobody else saw it, but like I, I knew it was coming, but I didn't do it because I saw the car, and, it, and I didn't pay attention to it, but it said 7000 And then yep. the, the weekend's planner, it said $16,000 car. And I'm just thinking, you know, that's the Trans Am was twenty eight. I, I went into the dealership to look at it prior to the main, you know, that weekend's <laughs> leaving. So that's, I that's... knew what I was there for. But <laughs> right. I was really trying to win 50 Gs, though, okay? I knew that I had a chance. So that's why yeah. Pete went down, too. So when Greg ran him into the wall, Pete had cut me off in the main before. Uh, as soon as I picked up my tire to go, he smacked my rear tire, and I, my foot came off the pedal. He went around me, and my heart started, oh, man, I, I got behind him and Gary. And I remember going into the back, and my dad, Richie, and Brian was there. And they had my legs up on the wall and Richie's massaging my legs. Dad's checking my heart rate and he's talking to me, you know, and he's like, uh, well, my, so my, I, my point was Richie, uh, Brian says to me, I said to Richie, I go, Richie, can you go find out what lane I got? And can you tell me what I got to get to win this thing? Brian looked over at me and he says, Ronnie, it don't matter what lane you got and you ain't going out there for nothing but to win. Hmm. Richie, you ain't going nowhere. You don't need to do nothing. Yeah. And that was it. You know, he was right. Okay. But I remember one time I was getting in my, I'm, I hope I'm not missing the point, but um, and if, I, if you want to, can help me with that. But I remember one time I go into the third round main event and they say Anderson Lane, it was Lane three. And I go up to get in Lane three and Eddie King goes to get in that lane. And I said, well, Eddie, you know, I, I got lane, I got lane three. ABA turns around, they, they make a big thing about it. They put me in lane, like a lane five, and then they didn't like lane five. So then they put me in a lane seven. And I think, I think that was, I, I don't know if they pulled that shit on me in 85, but I don't think they made it that difficult for me to win the 50 grand. But by the next year, everything was faulty and foul. So in 86, when I had my big reign and then went to that final, that final was tough because, I mean, of course I lost Sean Texas and I go to, we're going down the straightaway. The only way I could lose is if Sean Texas gets a sixth place and um, Sean gets a sixth, you know, that's after they added races and Pete got that extra win. I think he won three races that year and two of them were that weekend that I didn't go. Right. They, hmm. We added another race that year, which gave them enough point of uh, races to get number one pro. So all of these facts are in there. You could go into the, the go in there, okay? But not once are they're going to say anything about the car. They're going to say refuse the car. Well, at least they had the balls to tell them to shut up their ass. <laughs> right. And another thing too, they told me. I said, look, you can. I go if you give me a brand new. I told you, then we're even, okay? And they didn't even do that. Hmm. Yeah, I was what I was my, my point, Ronnie, was that, you know, from 86 on, it seemed like I you could tell that your heart, your heart wasn't in it. It wasn't. It wasn't my fault, bro. I no, no, I'm not. I'm not people. No, no I blame. You, I thank you for that, because it's true. My spirit was broke, bro. Yeah, I got broke. it wasn't just the money. OK, the family, too. But. There were some talents that I had that didn't never got to got used. And when they go, I could blame it on myself and go, well, but I can't because I did everything I was supposed to do. Right. I was supposed to do me. And, you know, I didn't do the rad movie, but it was supposed to be respect. BMX was supposed to go grow more. It was supposed to get more. And I think that's the problem. That's why I think that Todd has a good positioning now because I think the world really knows. And if you think about it, okay. We were other people's, they know. There's people that do know this, that go, ah, they know. But how many people know where it died, you know? And, and for me, that's where it died. 
and you start taking away things from people and going, and it's all working out good for you, but it's really not, you know, right. in accounting practices today for what they do and how they do it. It's, it's great. It's awesome. I love, I love everything. Danica does real well in it. Kids are yeah. thriving, but they're done racing. The 99.9% of them are already done by the time they're sick. They take their cruisers from them and they go, Oh, you got to go right over here. Well, I think it's great to be able to ride those tracks, but I think that there should be a few series and maybe if you want, maybe one clip, I don't know, in that super class, I don't know, but right. I think there should be some flat turns. Uh, I think I'd love it. I, I mean, I've, I've said the same thing, <clears throat> Ronnie, I've said the same thing over the years. You know, there's always the um, periodically you'll see these Facebook debates where people talk about clips and not clips and tracks and all this kind of stuff. And I, and I always say like, Take one race and 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 just take a turn. Just try it. Just try making one turn that's a little bit flatter and see how see how it works out. Just one turn. Yeah, and- just one. I said that too, and, and they, they're not doing it. So because they know the controversy too that it brings. I mean, today you don't even race for first. I mean, to qualify. I mean, in, in a pro class, when they took away the mo- first moto transfer, because I I'll be honest with you, waking up in the morning, having breakfast, knowing go seeing who's in your race. You know, me, I told you I counted it up and stuff, but um, it was always exciting. You know, sometimes it'd be 800 first place transfer. And, you, you know, you draw a race with somebody who cut you off the day before, you know, and <laughs> that one class, you know, and he's yeah. back but, he, he's going to, you know, he, you're you not going to let him get that money. You draw a lane next to him, too. You draw. God, <laughs> Ronnie, you lane next to that fool. It's like this. Things are working out. <laughs> Ron, Ronnie, what about when Richie turned? What about when Richie turned pro? Then you started, you had to race him again. You know, like you raced, in, you know, at a different level now. Was that a rivalry to you? Like just family or did you guys just see that as whatever? Oh. So, no, because I, it was just like Brian and Brent or Brent and Brian, they uh, older brother, little brother. But yeah. you know, regardless, that's the way it is um, as a, the approach that we're talking about. And, and I guess in life in general, you have yeah. brothers, you know, sometimes the older one's better, sometimes the younger okay. one, whatever. But in my case, I was the avalanche's little brother uh, for a long time. And I always felt that way, like. You know, I was free spirit where, you know, I'd be on Panda hanging around with Frank Post. Probably, you know, you'd be thinking, what the hell was it, Pope thinking? Well, he was you know, he's probably glad that I was gone and he could spend more time with his girl. And <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But, um, yeah. Uh, you guys really are the opposite of the Pattersons, though. Because so the way I, the way I look at it, because because Brent was a dominant was dominant. He's the older brother and was do- dominant first, no, and then sure. was sur- and then was surpassed by his younger brother, yeah. who dominated afterwards. Where well, you know, it was the opposite with you two. Where the Avalanche he dominated as an amateur, but you came on afterwards and dominated as a pro. As a pro, yeah, yeah. So it is it. in the way I see it, it's the opposite of the Pattersons kind of is you know you're right and i'm a racer x and they sprayed that stuff in my face and i just ran with it until my machine broke down i guess i don't know i'm an evil people fan but it wasn't really necessarily that way but you gotta remember when i was a kid before bmx i mean i'd wake up in the morning on the weekend and there could be 50 motorcycles down the alley okay you know and they're one percenters or something and you know and and, and we're just having moms making breakfast with these other ladies and you know it's just it kind of, you know it was different you know and then dad kind of gave up the BM, uh, that kind of stuff and um, the club life and, you know, the motorcycles and bought a couple airplanes. And then it was horses and going flying the planes every night and baseball, uh, ju- uh, uh, taekwondo. And, and then BMX came around. And uh, so, you know, I grew, I was like, already kind of we were still going down you know on that motorcycle every night 80 miles an hour down the parkway was fun bro (laughs) sitting on the tank of your dad's hurley yeah or when dad was flying upside down you know and doing uh, lazy eights flips chasing the cattle i mean i told him i you was out of control dad he said no i wasn't i said yeah you were (laughs) (laughs) walking the wheels are turned to where in the 150 and the plane's just going like this. And 
he, he did. Those were the eyes of a scared man. <laughs> <laughs> but he pulled out of it. You know, dad would put the hundred dollar bill, uh, you know, on the, on the dash and, you know, he'd just stop and put it first gear or second and just look at you and wait for you to go try to get it. 68 Corvette, you ain't getting nothing. And, uh, well, he was just a badass. Pape was a badass. Yeah. yeah the best years, man. I remember yeah. this rock and roll and BMX uh, first moto uh, main event, trying to get that win that third round. That's how it really all started, you know, and you couldn't, you, if you lost the first moto, you know, it really kind of sucked because then you had to race a moto for I see my, my screen's doing a max headroom. It's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> it was cool. I thought it was me. Yeah. You can't just make this stuff up. Yeah. Uh, it's amazing. <laughs> hey, hey Max Headroom. Man, that's good stuff. <laughs> I can't believe you remembered Max Headroom. That's yeah. Amazing. Hey, I yeah. wanted to go, I wanted to go back on what JV talked about, which was when um when Richie turned pro. And you guys yeah. were racing each yeah. other. What, what was what what was that like for you? So it was tough, but uh, you got to remember, I Richie, uh, even though when, by the time he went pro, he was like eighteen, and uh, he was kind of truth to that possibility of Olympics and BMX amateur stuff. Right. He was a really good amateur too, because Mike Polson had gotten those titles. Okay, and then Brian, like most of us, went pro at seventeen. Mike, you too. Correct. Okay. Yep. It's what, how old are you when you're pro? 17. 18? 17. Myself? James. Uh, eight, 17. 17. Okay, I see. And then you, Eric, you were 18. I, I, mean, I was 18. Yeah, I went to. Yeah. I went to. Yeah. yeah. You I went to NBL games. Grands. And wait until I, you couldn't I, wait no more. Well, you know what? I went to NBL Grands and I was. Uh, you know, I was a little bit behind Hayden in points and I just told my dad, I'm like, this is stupid, man. Why would I, why would I, I'm not racing. I don't want to race for number two. You didn't but, see him putting a boat up there. That was the problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. okay. All right. That's, I, I just, saying, I don't know why they don't do it. It just sounds stupid to me that they wouldn't, I, I, I want them to do it twice a year. Okay. That's the only way you're going to make it up to me. So technically, they owe me eighty five thousand cash. That's without any. I, I I I went to college. Okay, I did accounting, and that's not even with putting on anything and saying, well, um, how, how would you say it simultaneously or dividends or anything, you know? But uh, and and they don't want my advice. In fact, you know, the bus can come by, but a bus can come by and pick them up too. Okay. I'm okay with that. Life, life is for the living and we got to live, but Hey, you know, bad news, bad news. We're getting some bad news here today. ABA, you done fucked up. <laughs> you done fucked up. You done fucked up. <laughs> See, I know they're not going to do anything for me. They're never going to give it to me. They could just, if they want to tell the truth, tell right. the truth. But I'm telling you, go get the truth. And it's not even my life. It's just, that's what it developed to. This is how they take a king down, all right? And kill all his people. Hey, are you are you going to write a book? Are you going to write a book? Brian Patterson. He killed the dream of being a Brent Patterson. He killed the dream of being a Pistol Pete. Well, whatever. And then they, I'm just, I'm like, I'm, you know, I, I like Pete. We're buddies, but I just like, whatever. I mean, yeah. But he was the last of uh -oh. I admit it kind of like that. He, you know, but then if they would have done that for Ronnie, okay, kept their what I mean, I woke up every morning, I got on that bike and I made sure that chain was okay because I didn't want to die today. You know what I mean? I was gonna go get me sprints on here in a minute. And I'm gonna get me this Trans Am. And uh, that made it more fun. That made it more fun. And I think that that's where they hurt. That's where they hurt me there. But again, I sure I suffered from it. But I knew there'd come a time when the full circle will make it circle. And somebody, and I think the answer to it is, that's it's not an existing track or anything they got out there today. It's uh, a development course where you go set up at a place and you have a race, okay? And um, you could do that. And then, you mean like a mall parking lot or something like that? 
Fair enough. I like uh, you okay. know, when you go get this right. And uh, I know Bo- uh, Bobby Hammond and John Cruz put on a race one day. And uh, that was the most funnest race I probably had in somebody's backyard. You know what I mean? I, I only raced once before. And now all of a sudden, John Cruz got a race there. I'm like, wow, I'm over there, you know? It was well, fun. The trophy and everything. It was cool. Now, <laughs> Todd, now Todd Huffman has a race. He does. Right. And, yep. uh, it could be the baddest thing on the planet going. And I know that it has a spirit to do it, and it does it. But I think we need to take advantage of it. We need to get some corporate. Like I think my thing to see it is, is that you could build a couple turns if you wanted to, okay? You could even make a tunnel turn, okay? Just face the fact, if you have, you know, maybe, I did just guesstimate, so uh, I'd like to say it's, say, a three-year contract. Why would you do it in one year anyway? You know, you're looking at corporate monies. Maybe we get three million a year, okay? What are you going to do with that money? Well, if we could get three million of it, and how much are you going to spend in marketing? You don't, You know what? Look, man. That's a business thing. I don't even want to go into that co- that part of it. But, but the point is, um, if you had the monies right and get the prizes right, uh, get the get the format going, it could get bigger. And I think the way it could get bigger is network TV should have like Discovery Channel should follow. Okay, so we come out, we have the seventy four challenge or you know the real whatever the little bike stuff. People can buy those bikes. Uh, today brand new that are just like that and that's fair okay they should have that class they should have uh, uh, an 80s class 90s class whatever they do now how do you give away those that those prizes well if you have one pro class you have how many classes races we're going to put how many what do we got to give away now if we give away corvettes you're going to give away four of them five of them they're eighty thousand a piece four hundred fifty thousand dollars right if that's where the money is supposed to go Put it there. Don't line your pockets with it because it ain't going to be there next year. You're not going to get the contract next year. I, that's where I think the, the whole thing, that's why it fell the way it, or the way it is the way it is. Now, now when the Olympics comes around or you talk about Connor Fields, you're talking about a different breed. Uh, they're the greatest athletes probably on the planet, but I think we were too, okay? I think we had a time of our lives. But I think our times, you know, I think – could it could it could it work for the the new school? Well, I think it's going to work for a lot of people that you could you, you could have a certain amount of races and change some of the stuff. Like I said, um, they well they have so um, in Europe they'll have a race when the gate will come up like a motorcycle uh, flat track, and they'll have maybe one clip on, but they're just going in a circle, and that last lap to get that high low elbow up in there, right? Yeah, that's um, that's they they do, they do that over in um, they do that over in the UK. Yeah, and so and you they, want they're... that too. You yeah. want that too, um, and you want that competitiveness where it goes back and forth. So if you're going to look at it like a business, where you know another comp- competing deal, you know at some point you got to draw a model that says, you know, whatever it is that you're going to do, what your goals are. In my case, it would be if it was going to go back to that full circle, um, even if you couldn't do this twice a year, uh, we're not saying we're going to give away Corvettes, but at some point. Um, you're How about Chevettes? Be- <laughs> give away Chevettes. <laughs> yeah, the first time, the first day I met BA, I'm in Texas, in Dallas, Texas, this BA senior, 1985 in the summer, comes up walking on with that corn pipe going. Or his uh, uh, tobacco pipe. Yep. He walks up to me, and I'm just getting done with a pro practice. And it was kind of pleasing to smell the cigars or the to the pipe. And I'm like, who in the hell is this old man? But I'm listening to him, you know. He says, you know, Ronnie, if you win this thing, we might give you a green gremlin AM FM stereo optional. <laughs> you know, if you do that to me, I'll kill you. <laughs> i don't know him from adam you know a green a green gremlin am fm optional, optional. <laughs> that was an upgrade right there that i respected that was funny you know yeah the, the final right. kick of the balls before it really came down i didn't know that they were after it as just a business and to take everything from everybody i i didn't know that that was going to happen 
I mean, you know, whatever it is, I'm sure they give a lot and everything. It wouldn't work if they didn't give something back to the people that are doing it, you know. Right. But it's all gotten down to tax write-offs, how many bike companies, what they're doing. It's all a, a money thing, you know. And they lose money to make money. I understand. It's just, that's just business. Yeah. Well, that's but still in my case, in my case, it's really going to cost you. And uh, the reward is big. And uh, they don't they don't want to be around anymore than they're done, really, if you think about it, because you got B.A. out there, gray hair now, junior. He's been around there doing it his whole life. OK, he got his braces off of me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, listen, uh, it, it, the, what what the product there's the product that they're putting out is is like E.C. said, they're giving kids a place to race. But. Yeah. There's a place for the old men to race now at Frogtown, and we really had a great time. We had a great time at Frogtown, so much so that we've decided that you know, Ronnie, you probably don't know this. We've decided to put our own our own event, our uh, a, a Frogtown like event in Southern California. We're calling it the Dirty Fest, and we're going to have a vintage bike race with a bike show and a '80s party and a. And and there's yeah. event there's I think there's one event for sure for you and that's going to be the foot down championships. Yeah, <laughs> I think Ronnie would crush it in the foot down I championships. Know. Yeah, Pete wouldn't have cut me off. I had respect for people out there. I lost respect for Gary for the same kind of bullshit because when you're going for a title and you're not involved in the title, you should stay away from everybody and get out of the fucking way and let them battle. I that's what I say. And if the number one's pro is going faster than you, just move over and let them go by. Okay. You'll get your chance to high low them and elbow them in the next turn. You don't want to just outright just cut somebody. Run. It's just, that's just not, it shouldn't be a style. It's really not our style. We'll, we'll get you, we'll set you up. We'll let you go by so we can high low you, you know, LA is like Stewart rode different. He would wait for you to catch up. He'd hit his brakes. He'd run into him and he'd take off. <laughs> He did that to me in 86, and I said, how did I fall for that, you know? <laughs> how did I fall for that? So he was actually still good at that at, at the later ages. But, yeah, take going back to where we started, racing Richie, uh, uh, James, I apologize. We no. So, Richie, um, I was actually good by then time, that time, but I was earning it. I think this is when Mike and I had battles, too. Yeah, you there with the LA, all the LA boy. Because we considered you an LA boy, Mike. And it wasn't the, your race at the World Cup that you won that to me that made you. I, that was respectable. I just was like, you had won three in a row, pro ABA nationals in a row first. And it, I, I was like, oh shit, Brian hasn't done that yet. <laughs> Thanks, yeah, Ronnie. Thank true. you, Ronnie, for pointing that out. I appreciate it. We're not a stats guys here, okay? But, um, hey. J JV's never read my stats on the line, so it's it's good time. <laughs> but yeah, you, you had done that. You were the first one to do that, and then I went and won ten in a row. Yes, you did. That record didn't get beat, and until uh, Sam Willoughby, twenty-eight years later, and he won fourteen in a row, but there was only. So there was two, Grand Nationals. He went from Grand National to Grand National. And then, um, but he, there was only 12 races that national year. But they, I think they were $17,000 races. So the pros were for, for first place. Wow. The pros were actually making money at one point. The corporate money was actually there for the salaries for them. I don't know how they did that, but they need to be doing that again too. And then the amateur thing. But I think mainly if they could just get like, how do you, okay. So if you want to think about where the pros are at today, they all do have their own cars or family lives or whatever. The reason why they're pros. Okay. Usually in some case, um, but you got, we're, we're, we're still talking about BMX and living the BMX dream. By the time you're think, considering racing pro, you're a professional and you're, you know, it's a job and it's all these things no longer, just you know going out and hitting some tabletops with uh bob and rc you know <laughs> right it's a lot it's yeah. a different dream now yeah and so i see him having this one uh the nick kinman things going on the little rush out there that he's getting 
all respectable, the YouTube stuff and um, just the people behind them, obviously a champion, you know, a little happy when it comes to somebody else winning a race, but it's okay. And um, end of the day, a BMF, you know, uh, everybody, I think it's all about being an Olympic champion. I think even Danica is a child or kidding, excuse me, when she was, okay, she's, she's a young woman now, but she, that's what she wants. It's still, she still has that childhood dream that right. she wants to be an Olympian. Okay. Right. And I, with that being said, I know she wants to, she's okay with, she wants what least post is doing. She's admires that and wants, she respects that. And right. she, Can I have a life like that? If though I want, I'm a BMX or I'm sure she's thinking, you know, right. so I know that the guys have that too. I see it close to me in my family and respect it. You know, a hundred percent what they're doing, which he's able to have done and the writers that he teaches and does. So it went from that little flat track to what it is today and all these rules, but that rule is that rule. And that's BMX, you know, we've gotten there. Okay. We've disqualified Ronnie plenty of times. We've got to figure it out anyway. Um, Hey, I, I want to say one more thing because while we're on here is that uh, I know that. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, here, here you go. Yeah, um, we still got how, was it difficult? Was it really? I'm James, sorry, go ahead. James wants to know about how it was to have, get take a beating from Richie when he went pro. Remember, I was trying to finish that, but I just keep yeah. talking. That's okay. <laughs> My dad called me Mr. Mouse sometimes. All right, James, <laughs> It was rough because when he first hit the pro scene, he took it very, very serious with each step he took. Uh, and kick ass. Denny David Al won double A that day. It was uh, January uh, Reno Pro Spectacular. Yep. Probably had 35 pros there all wanting the Trans Am. And uh, we're going to race Friday night. Pro Spectacular. That tracks. I, I remember that. That was a breakout race for me, Ronnie. That was that super small track. Yes, it was badass though, huh? Yeah, well, it was there was a lot of there was a lot of kung fu going on in, in those turns. Oh, fighting out there all, all <laughs> weekend, man. It was badass. Yeah. And then they changed the track a little bit for Sunday, Saturday or Sunday. Yeah. yeah. Like even kind of cooler because the pro spectacular was like, Yeah, let's go get this, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was fun. And Denny David Al took it, and then Richie, Richie won Pro Cruiser. And then I remember what happened. It's funny because and that was the mo that was the pro cruiser main that Richie won was the second I clicked in to to what I did in that that season. So I go into a turn, I high low peak, and we crash. Richie goes right by me, and I remember just watching Richie go by, and I look down at the track, and people are going and moving. It was like slow motion. My heart just started beating real fast, and it said, get on your bike and don't stop for one second. And I ran that finish line, and I said, how do you solve that, Ronnie? What? And I'm paying attention to what I did because it meant something to me. Right. I said to myself, when you get on that gate and that gate drops, you have a responsibility to that finish line with everything you've got if there's points or money on the line. So in a semi, it didn't really matter. Just get top four. We've got mains coming up. We got five of them tonight, fellas. Yeah, it's gonna be a good <laughs> running. <laughs> yeah, and they don't have—they have that once a year at the Grands. We get to, you know, and the kids go to these races. It's pretty—I like following the races a little bit. I mean, sir, I'm just saying. Now you saw Terry, <laughs> dude. I'm I'm with it, Ronnie. I think I I'm with it. I'm, I'm sorry I'm, you went down and you didn't get the car, and I did, or somebody else did. I don't know what <laughs> who they're arguing about what happened, but that's why I say, man. There's jujitsu. There's jujitsu and kung fu going on, bro. Hey, whatever happened to your car, Ronnie? Do you have any idea? I was parking uh, uh, the uh, four banger in storage to get on a plane to go win my next biggest failure, which would have been winning a s taking except well, I would have accepted it because I would have already, but that was the uh, uh, eighty six grand that weekend so when i got there that weekend i had already wrecked my car i bent it in half so i was coming oh. up coming up this hill and it was uh raining and I, I slid and um i started going like i was going off the canyon and 
I corrected it and I went right in between the guardrails and bent the car in half. And I remember looking in the back seat and the roof was just getting closer to my son and uh, scaring the hell out of me. I wasn't going fast, but that accident happened. And so I parked it in storage and uh, Tammy took me to the airport and I flew off first. She was going to follow later after family uh, Thanksgiving. I need to get I was ready to go get my laps on, but I bent the car in half. And um, so uh, in the day, that's what happened to that one. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, you know, wow. I, I never heard yeah, that. I, I never that. heard that story. Yeah, I never heard that. I never heard that story. You know, so I had that going against me. And then, you know, we'll change a couple lanes here and there. That was a rough day a little bit like, but I think I held handled it well because we did a Sports Illustrated interview that weekend, okay? And I, it was weird because the guy that come to see me from Sports Illustrated, where I met him, somehow they, somebody said, oh, you can go see this guy who wants to do or whatever. I'm like, oh, oh, okay. So we go sit in this car and it's just like the one that I bent in half the night, oh. a few hours ago or, you know, whatever. Wow. And um, I'm kind of laughing to myself a little bit. But I remember after doing that interview with the guy, I had to go race. And I was like, well, I did sign up and I want to get out, get out so I can rest. And, you know, they don't understand. They didn't understand what I was doing, you know, so I'm going to do me, you know, fuck you. Right. Well, I did the best I could with what I had. And I went out to practice and he never called me back. So I didn't get to talk to him. But after the race, the Sports Illustrated guy had come up to me and he said, Ronnie, he goes, when you get back to Pittsburgh, he says, I want you to come down to the office. So we're going to get you an attorney and uh, we're going to get you your number one pro back because they knew the details. I had told the guy the details in the interview. I had time for that. We talked about some stuff, you know, we were talking about partying, you know, I was like, yeah, you know, I kind of, you know, played around. I said, I never put a needle in my arm, you know, but I said, you know, I had quit smoking weed, you know, I had just quit smoking pot and uh, I didn't do it at the races from a long time when I was a kid. I learned that lesson professionally by 84 as a professional. You just didn't smoke weed at races. You, you right. couldn't beat me. If you got high, you was losing anyway, okay? Because I'm not getting stoned. I want that money. You know what I mean? I'm not. I, 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 cocaine didn't make me faster. Nothing else made me faster. There's only one thing we all know that's going to make you faster and stronger, and that's steroids. Yeah. but short of that we don't do that we don't do none of that stuff and uh to be a bmx champion because you can't do that and be a bmx champion yeah except for steroids yeah speaking speaking of steroids he wants he wants to be good friend of mine mike i told him if you got out of line i i mental or uh Kick you in the mouth, you know, you laugh, you know. <laughs> See, the thing you, about Pete, the thing about Pete, you guys gotta know, like, like he is the baddest, okay? Like, and, and I'm I watch Greg Hill interview, and, and Greg is the best. Richie and I come out the gate and uh, we get back to the pitch, and he said, Did you feel that drum roll? I was like, hell yeah, dude, bro. Greg would be in the middle of us, and we would just bam, 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 bam. It was like it was a rock band going wild down there. <laughs> He was not backing off, bro. I know you traveled a lot with Pete and Kevin Shepman together. You guys would all go. No, that seems like I always see you guys together. We never uh, hung out like that. Pete, uh, Kevin would do his thing. Like, it's funny because we were, Kevin and I were around for a year and a half. So I got to experience Kevin's skills, his abilities, a lot of them. When we were done, uh, or not done, I just wanted, I mean, they bought me a, a truck. It was a nice truck. But um, it wasn't enough to keep me, but I, I wanted it. I wanted to keep the truck and I wanted to keep the sponsorship. But um, people were making 35 and that wasn't enough for me. So a lot of people would offer me money. Like it's funny, like GT, Redline, SE, um, Skyway. And that's why Skyway quit. They told me, they called me and said, well, if you don't, you know, we'll double Richie's contract. If you don't take it, we're going to hang up the team. I, I was, you know, when I think about it now, that, that's a little rough. Why would you say that to me? You know, it's my brother's sponsor, mm. you know, mm. 
but I wanted to, but I was like, I knew them tough wheels were hard to win on because I had hung out with Richie. Richie was a good pro and that whole season. We traveled together. We didn't live in the same state, but we traveled. We were tight, thick as thieves. I know what I mean like that. We were there to race and we were next to each other. You know, we, we had each other's back. We were racing. He was ready. If Harry cut me off, you had to deal with Richie next time, boy. I was like, yeah. Mm. And me and Tommy had our thing, even though they were all friends and teammates. Richie would be right behind my back. Like, he's like, you know what? You can do a lot of things. I know Ronnie, but you're just not going to beat down on my brother like that, you know? You're going to leave him alone and give him a chance, you know? And and, and I had, and they like, Tommy was, was a beast. Like, he would get out of the two bike lengths ahead of you, you know? <laughs> like, how in the hell do you do that, you know? Tommy didn't have to cut you off. He, yeah. he'd, move, he'd move over. He wouldn't even cut you yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. No, he yeah. wouldn't cut you so far in front. Exactly. He, he had that ability. So people had their own superheroes. And we, so, but yeah, Pete and I, we, we battled, I think, I think the hardest at the biggest races that was left. So when we would like, but he didn't win the world. And it was always, it was Brian won uh, four of them and got a second. I won three of them and got a second. And then there's everybody else, but, you know, but I think, you know, Pete got the last one and that was in Irvine. I think I didn't go. I was hurt. Richie told me, Oh, I'm going to win. I, said, I hope so. But he didn't win. I was hey, Ronnie, I, Ronnie, Ronnie. Go, just going back. Sorry. You right. just to, to close this, you, you mentioned a, a bunch of teams that you could have ridden for. Do you regret any regrets? Maybe you should have said on any of those teams, do you think about it now and say, maybe I should have taken that deal? Yeah. Maybe I should have went and helped and did the rad movie too. And made it just a little radder. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. It's just hard to say, like, you know, answering those kind of questions are, are tough. Cause when it gets to the heart of me, when you really want to know why I stopped winning, not only were you guys getting faster, but they took it away. They took it away that lock in focus really like, so we knew that after it was all over with and you could no longer win a Trans Am or 50,000, no, nobody else knew what it was like to win 50,000. In fact, nobody today knows what it's like to win $50,000, okay? And that 50,000 is nothing because it's actually 120,000 today. And I'm just trying to be entertaining. <laughs> well, you're, you're entertaining, Ronnie. You're entertaining. <laughs> you're entertaining. It's the same for if you want to be a BMX racer, Mike. And today, what are you, how are you going to make a living? Okay. Don't knock a girl up. What else don't you not do? Because <laughs> I, I want you to be able to go out. Okay. And <clears throat> pay rent. Okay. I want you to be able to race. If we can't bet on it, right. We should still be able to make a living on it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of ways. There's a lot. No, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with that. Why not? Because um, why? Why should? A, what's the value in having a pro? Where's his? Where is he, his or her value? Yeah, I think his value is we're talking about winning and winning. Let, well, let's say his or her. So this isn't so much a sponsor thing. It all came down to when you guys got in staging, you knew some people were racing for the trophy, that big trophy they saw. Maybe they didn't want to go buy the trophy. Superstitious. You know, the trophy, mm -hmm. that was, you won the Grand Nationals, dude. You got a nice trophy. You were a little kid. That was huge. I only got one of them. So, you know, but that, I won the Mongoose, but it gave you the grease. Dude, that was nice. You know, I was like, yeah, that was a nice trophy. But so, but when you turn pro, you're going to race money. You're going to race for money now, or are you going to go on to college, right? So, I don't know. I think that you could build more diamonds out of the rough, okay, so to speak. What 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 was the question? I forgot. We were, we were talking about some making a living at races. Okay. Oh, that's right. Keep racing BMX. Okay, and still making money. So, if you're going to say, okay, well, we'll we'll do that. We're doing that. We have a race over here in the middle of summer. So anywhere you pick a race at, of course, we're already doing that. That's what we do, right? Okay. Right. And the guy that wins is going to be this featured, skilled most talented guy on the planet he's probably running 33 now or something i don't know well according to brent patterson you're the most talented guy that ever rode a bike 
And I'll tell you what, True. it's been, it's a. Uh, Brent said that. Uh, Brian said that. He's, well, Brent said that. He was my idol. He's uh, respectable to say that. Brent yep. had hard when I came pro, okay? He had a tough time. And I, he had, I imagine he had a tough time uh, with Richie. That, that was not a, cool for him or his brother doing that to him like that. Same well, with, uh, you know, he even, I even admitted that when his girlfriend showed up at the track and Brian was in front of him. You know, he gave him a little elbow. That's that. That's that's And, you know, BMX is a great sport. It's the greatest on the planet. It's what we got. But it's nothing compared to the dream that we once had and what's possible again. And I think that we have to create it somehow. It's going to be tough. Um, You know, nobody wants to smell a bunch of shit in a barn field, you know. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. Well, you, I'll tell you this, you were the king of the shit in the barn fields. Yeah. <laughs> it was All- the whole thing. Everything was good. It was a great sport. Great. I wouldn't change a damn thing. And uh, we wouldn't, and crazy, we wouldn't change a thing about you. No, I just I, want to say, man, it was great yeah. to have you on. You were, you were exactly, you were exactly what I thought you were going to be. Yeah. Crazy yeah. Ronnie. Yeah, but what we really care about, Ronnie, what we really care about is the great times that we had. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you were part of that because you supplied so much great entertainment. Just you being Ronnie. It was yeah. a great show. Whether you you whether you were the cowboy with a white hat or the cowboy with a black hat, whether you had your white 09 uniform on in or the motos and your black one in the mains. Yep. <laughs> you, you put on a great show, man. And, and I know a lot of our a lot of our people that watch our show loved you for it, man. And we appreciate you coming on here and being a guest on the Dirty Knobs, man. It's thank been you. great. And and each one of you is I uh, get this opportunity to say thank you to uh, Eric, um, James. Uh, it, it has been a pleasure. And it, we did have a wonderful uh, experience and uh, you know, vicariously, um, you know, we should only say that we're lucky to have had it. Richie seems to be able to do it. Uh, Apple and tree. Uh, not yeah. too many of them uh, keep doing that, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. Right. That's why it's hard. It's uh, as I, as I, you know, serenade off. Uh, that's why Richie does. Richie doesn't want to do these, these kind of shows um, simply because, he wants he's writing the book you know he's writing the chapter you know it isn't over with yet you know it's been tough on the andersons to you know danica crashing having a shot at number one this year yeah for her you know congratulations that you know she won her cruiser title again you know um you know of course she has won uh, more nag ones uh in a row, maybe not on the same bikes, uh, but then anybody else, uh, amateur. Okay. Nice. Now, um, and then you have Eric, right? And so Eric Roop is the all time one right now. So Danica is trying to, in the amateur, she has opportunity to fight for that as she would actually begin to turn 18 and move on to the pros. So it's ideal for her to finish off her season. Uh, when you look at it from five years old to 18, which she'll end up doing as is scheduled, if she continues to want to do it, mm-hmm. she has the chance to catch our all time great uh, one by one. Uh, Eric is two ahead. I think he has 21. Well, all she has to do is race another 45 years like he has. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> as an amateur, he did, get, he, he did get a head start on her, you know? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then then like Danica, she she has you know uh, the uh, Sherry Ellett to win three in a row, and 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 that has never been beat. Um, but I think uh, if I if I'm correct, uh, Elise Post won five national championships in amateur. She has like yeah. 12, twelve in um, uh, seventeen altogether, twelve pro title number ones on the wow. board. The girls are rocking it on the girls' boards, okay? They are rocking it. So a couple of years ago, they gave away motorcycles, guys. Last year, they gave away crap. Ronnie kind of puked on those guys. I don't mean to steal your spot, Mike. But um, the last time I did a podcast, they fixed something. They gave away stuff to the pros. Um, my request this year is that if you have a pro class and you have a title, give them all the same thing. 
and give it to them twice. Um, and, I, I say if they're going to fix something, they should give all the Hall of Famers a Camaro. Right. We are a BMX. And, well, okay. Or a Green Gremlin. He could be right. Or a Green Gremlin. <laughs> or a Green with, Gremlin. With, with an AM, FM upgrade. I'm all for it. Optional. It's optional. Yeah. Uh, you guys are great. I, I, I think I did. I had a lot of fun with you guys. Uh, I think I'm an influencer. I'm going to do Craig Reynolds too. Let him push me around a little bit. Nice. <laughs> you guys were good. Um, but yeah, you know, I am all about the sport. It ain't all about me. Um, but when I left it, I, I, you know, it was a little rough. I, it wasn't on my terms. Like it ain't anybody else's. In right. some cases, because we'll just ride till you just can't ride anymore, you know. And I, I, I broke my neck, my back. I've had 27 open reductions. Me and Bob Knievel became friends way before this started. But once I broke my neck, my body fell apart. I recently just had an ankle replacement uh, a week ago, and um, uh, it's I'm lucky. I'm not. I don't have to take you know any of the drugs. You know they they're fixing me up real good. Nice. Well, I'm glad you hear that. Good, I'm glad you're good. healing up, buddy. Me, I want to get my 29 built. I want my own uniform. Buy cut off the sleeves. Make reggae on the side. Love it. Back, uh, shorts, cut the pants. Get, get a 29 and start doing some wheels. You know what I mean, dude? I love it. <laughs> hey, you know what, Ronnie? What we what we do here? It, we're just we're really we're we're just three friends, three brothers. And we right. just like, we just like to talk about the fun that we had, right? That's literally, that's our plan. We don't, we don't script anything. Nothing. We just come and. We, we had just, a little bit of some, some reserve things, you know, and I'm not perfect, but I, I can't, I can't sit here and judge you. I like it. You guys are the best and you don't even know it, but you know it. <laughs> that, that was a Ronnieism. That's a Ronnieism. Yeah. We ain't stopping, bro. We we just love having a good time and telling old stories, man. These are old stories that never that may never get told, right? And so we feel that we have the opportunity to bring these stories out of people, and that's why we do it. Give me that platform, and I freaking love it, man. Because you know, as people say that, oh, he was the most talented, or I mean, I, I hey, again, thank you, Pop A. You know, um, yeah. I've got to thank God for giving me that. And when you ask for me, it's telling the story. What, how did that happen for you? This is how it happened. You know, I had, yep. I had greatest competition on the planet to look at. Um, I, I was surrounded by Richie in the mornings. Dad would bring the trophies and set them next to the, <laughs> to the, uh, uh, an organ. And, uh, there would be three firsts for Richie and, maybe five of them i don't know but there'd be some seconds and thirds for me we'd sit at the table for breakfast before school and richie would want to read the cereal box i'd be like man look at your own trophies i was pick richie won all the time dude all the time. yeah it's some not point, even not most of the time yeah <laughs> all the time all the time yeah. so my dad says if he's got more trophies up there then you might as well let him read the box so you can hurry up and get done eating and figure out how to win them yourself but um richie was the greatest man and it made it easy to lock in and then seeing the patterson brothers live their dream too i'm going to be honest with you man john cruz was a bmf bro he so when i was a kid i'd be riding down the street and yeah. then Look over. I remember looking over and I saw this guy jump up on this tennis court, ride this fence and jump down. And you couldn't, I, when I was good, when I finally tried that shit myself, I couldn't do it for a while. Yeah. This guy was going up the, this fence and went up. He just right at the fence where the, wherever the fruit is and ride over the fruit and then drop in Cruise. like seven feet drop down. That's cruise, bro. This guy, I'll say the first pro race I ever won, I won because of John Cruz. And it was that night, Jill Horan got it, you know, the night after. So, old Frank, the, the haunting of Frank. Yeah, here it comes. <laughs> I love it. So, I go into the first turn, I slide up, cast on my wrist, I slide, and I come out of the slide, and then we're a crazy horse here. I'm coming down the last straightaway, I'm in first place. And I'm looking underneath me, just pedaling with everything I got. There's a little double coming up. I look down and fucking here's John Cruz. I pull up over the double. John Cruz hits that thing and jumps over me. 
passes me in the air. I all of a sudden land. I'm like, he's still in the air and I pedal and I won by like this much. <laughs> no way. He gave That's me my amazing. first win by jumping. But John was the most inspiring of talent for me. Hollywood's hero. Mm. He's still an yep. inspiration. He's yeah. still in it. Certainly to me, he's a, he's, he's still my hero and he's still an inspiration. Yeah. Him and Charlie Venegas are like the ones to me, even though he was a kid and he had all that talent, maybe he didn't take it as far as he could have. There were other things that, you know, he just took way too far. The girls probably know what I'm talking about, but. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah. So. Oh, King Ding there. But he could do some business on that bike. Very, very talented. Yeah. And he was, good, he was a good racer. He was fair about it. But he had a lot of talent. Um, he know, got a lot of bobos. Yes. He got a lot of bobos. A lot of bobos. Yeah. That, that, he told me one day, he says, you can have all the girls in blow. And then one day I said, thanks for all the girls in blow. Yeah. Well. <laughs> I've been I've been through Vallejo. That's not a big prize. That's not a great prize. There's That's no, not a great prize. There's no prize in that. Um, when we lived oh. there, it was a small town. We had a track, and that's where you know I obviously got involved. But John, John had had the talent. Uh, Brent had some of that too. Like I remember going to Brent's house one time, and they took us. I was probably thirteen, and Brent, we come up to this hill, and I'm looking down. And I look back at these guys and I'm like, how can you do that? Because you don't even see where you're, you can't see the other side. You can't see, and it's way up there. And Brent just rolls off of it and goes down it. And I'm like, oh, he, how did he, and I saw it. I was like, well, that's how you do it. And I was like, I have to do that. So you basically had to roll over and say, I'm willing to die. Okay. And then just push down and stay at a certain spot and you could make it. But Brent was doing that stuff. John could do that kind of stuff. Anything that you think of, John could do that. Brent said he wasn't a very good jumper. He was a good speed jumper. Probably yeah. Anthony was probably the reason why I like talking about it because some of the things they talked about were the exact things that I saw in the riders. Anthony Sewell was probably the fastest ever. And uh, I got to experience that later. Tommy Brackens, he had some of that. Pete had some of that. He, he had some of that. Um, Sean Texas had a little bit of some of that. He, he they they say that he was. I personally didn't experience that. I know Sean came down. Him and Richie, uh, I flew in, and Sean and Richie were there, and so we go up over an overpass. We come down this uh, deal, lights green. We go around full speed, and I just took off from them. We get down to the other side, and Sean and Richie are like, I don't know how he does it, but. You know, I could walk because I was living in Pittsburgh, that frat, that air out there, that pounding in that good breathe, that good, uh, thick, thick, <laughs> thick Pittsburgh air. Yeah. So, but Sean later picked it. It was funny. Sean, Sean had a girlfriend of Leo. That's why he was there. But he, Sean actually, um, man, he was there 10 years later too, but 20 years later, I, I've seen him recently. He's big as ever, you know, same size. Big guy. I'm sure his bars are bent, you know. <laughs> Mike, the last time you practiced, did you get up there sideways? <laughs> yes. Every single time. Every single time. Every single time. <laughs> so, yeah, Anthony Sewell was probably, and then Tommy Bracken. So I, it's kind of a toss-up, how you'd say. So my first, or my first Grand National Pro, I get up on the gate in double A, and I hit the gate, and I flip down to the bottom. I get up and I get second behind Kevin McNeil and I win UBR number one pro and in pro cruiser um, had a good lap. I just remember coming out of the last turn and old Anthony pushing off with one leg and just kind of on a cruiser and just kind of motor into the finish. And I got second behind him there, but I'd already seen him in as an amateur. So I got two seconds that day, but Anthony Sewell, um, by the time I got to, to challenge him, uh, it was funny. He couldn't do it like he could when he was younger. I don't know why. I don't know why, but that sucker uh, was probably the fastest for a minute, for a minute. You know, he was, he was. Well, we all, ha we all have our minutes. 
We do. And I think that's what's so neat about us. And, and every one of us had to have some blessing because that other guy over there, he wasn't playing around either. And right. so if you could actually, you if you did not get up on the gate and think you were going to win, you didn't have a chance anyway. So yeah. imagine this, Mike. When I was as cocky as I was, you got up on the gate. And I saw a video one time, and they said something like, something about, he, you don't know where he's going to go or, he, you know, whatever. He, the one in uh, uh, Indiana, where Ronnie didn't stop for one second. Oh, another one of those. But, okay. you know, you actually, I mean, I don't think you got up on the gate that moto thinking you, you were going to lose. I mean, after that whole weekend's beating I gave you guys, I think it by that third round, you know, when I hide load y'all, you know, moved along with Richie up there and whatever, Tommy. Um, I don't think you got up on the gate thinking by then that you was going to lose either. You know, I didn't, you know, but, but, but we're going to run it anyway. We got, you know, there's some money and maybe Ronnie won't win. Hey, so I went to Baltimore. You see that? That's how I raced. Maybe Ronnie won't win. Maybe we'll cut the track and we'll stop him from winning any more races because that's <laughs> what it took. Okay. That's what it took. And I'm going to tell you. So, um, Mike, I remember going to Baltimore, Maryland. They had the best pizza ever. So pepperoni. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> JV's not going to let you get away with that. <laughs> yeah. JV's not going to let you. I don't know. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Ronnie. So they had this, they had this pizza. <laughs> it was really good. That was probably the best part of my weekend because I was pissed at you. This, and so, but I got over it. So your sponsor was there. It was the town your sponsor was from. And okay. I don't know what happened Saturday, but Sunday, I know I'm going for a triple. I know you're there and your sponsor's there. And pro open. And and I, I was this is what made me mad about it. Because if you'd have took me out in double A one main, I'd have been okay with that. I'd have been okay with that. It was Father's Day, mind you. But, you know. And um man, you come high low. And you, you didn't try to win. You just let me have it, bro. <laughs> you brought it to me. And I went down. Mm. I, I said, that some bitch, he got me. <laughs> wow. You know, because to me, it was, it, I respected it because it was that open, you got away with murder, but that what I was set out to do, you destroyed that. Like, I wanted to go home with that triple. Mm. Yeah. I wanted that well, triple. Well, oh, I'm that. sorry you didn't, I'm, I'm sorry if I took you out. I'm not sorry you didn't triple. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what i was most mad about yeah i'm not you sorry that. I, yeah, cause I deserved it yeah know? i don't i don't uh i don't me. honestly i don't me. remember i don't remember i remember racing you a few times yeah. uh and having tough tough races like uh uh like ec has pointed out i would not want to pass you in the first turn i would not want to pass you in the second turn no the only place to pass you is in the last turn because you know Ronnie's going to get you back, right? Yeah, I, I appreciate that. Um, I don't think personally, you know, to you know Brent and you know, I think about all the most talented guys that we had to go through, and you know, when you break it down, it was probably tough for everybody. Uh, more like the same. I think we all lived the same thing because the competition was so tough. Mm. I mean, to to think that you're going to win. You got to be an arrogant son of a bitch or have some kind of balls thinking you're going to go out there and smack down on the Patterson boys this weekend. Because that shit ain't, they ain't letting that shit happen. Right. They ain't well, letting it happen. No. What? In your mind, you didn't care. You didn't care. No, we're going to, they work one race at a time. See, it, what sucked is, Eric, and what's good for you and me is we never had to race each other, okay, back I, then. I know. But, because, you know, if you ever, you know, you you would have pulled that shit on me, just what I did to them, and we didn't go through that. I know we never got. <laughs> and I bet you and Mike didn't ever race like that either, huh? You never had. No, to I never. I never got to. I never got to race Mike. Yeah. yeah, I never. I'm sorry. I raced Mike maybe once or twice when you were coming back, but hmm. it's, you know, it's different different eras and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah I don't want to let you go. You. Oh, we're so awesome. I saw a video of you doing a time lap when time trials were coming. 
you were probably one of the last of the breeds that were born of cycling of the 80s. So because you actually got number one pro in the 90s, see? Yeah. So you got it in the era where Gary was running, Chris Lebeck was in the house. You, but you came, the people, the pros that you watched, it all retired. Correct. So out there alone, yeah. out there, kind of. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and yeah we, were I, the guys, you. we were proud of you, Eric. We were right. teammates for a minute. Yeah. You know, That's and, right. you know we would have kept being teammates. Pete and, me, Pete and I went out that night, broke my wrist the day before at the race. Yeah. And uh, so Pete picked me up. We had dinner, had a few drinks. And I came back and had some more drinks and I got sick at the bar. And then my white bear, I kind of stumbled back to my hotel room and the white bear wouldn't let me in. I think I fell asleep on uh, outside. You know, oh. and, uh, I was, I fell asleep. Yeah. I fell asleep next to uh, <laughs> uh, his neighbor. His neighbor rented a room there too. Really? Yeah, see, if I'd have fell asleep in the room, it'd have been fine. But when they saw me in the hallway, Hutch just said, "No, nah, we can't have him riding for us no more." <laughs> the I'm best gonna... prize we could win, Ronnie, was yeah. spending the night with you here doing this. This was a prize. Yeah, it was. It was really a prize. Was. It was. Really it was. was. It wasn't a surprise, but it was a prize. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, seriously, thank you so much for spending the time with us. Yeah, thank and, you, Ronnie. And- uh, I know all of our pals, all of our pals were all hitting us up about having crazy Ronnie on the show. So we're so, so lucky to have you. Thank you for being on our show, man. You're awesome. Thank you all. Okay, Thank you, Ronnie. Ronnie. Thanks brother. Peace. Peace. Hey, dirty knobs. We're asking you, uh, our friends to make a donation on behalf of John Cruz to the Davis Finney foundation. And that can be done at davisfinneyfoundation.org. That's D-A-V-I-S-P-H-I-N-N-E-Y foundation.org. Listen, your uh, your gift makes a difference. And together, we're helping people live better and building healthier Parkinson's communities. So listen, on behalf of John Cruz and the three of us here at the Dirty Knobs, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Well, I hope you enjoyed that one, you bunch of dirty knobs. I'm going to send a box out to somebody who subscribes. So please do that. Subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Comment if you have anything to say. We'd love to hear it. And uh, we will be back out here in two weeks with another one. And thanks to our sponsors. Speaking of which, we are going to read some commercials to you now. Thanks for uh, showing our sponsors the love because they're showing it to us. Thanks again, and uh, we'll catch up to you soon. And then sing it out right now. All right. <laughs> Coming live and direct from the Colt Clubhouse in Santa Ana, California. Come on down and get all your BMX needs. We're giving away free air for your tires. <laughs> That's all I got, brother. <laughs> That's great. That's great. All right. Yeah. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Kinda, designed for your journey. On the road, on the trail, or on the racetrack, you can count on Kinda quality. Our tires are engineered for performance and value across a wide range of interests and applications. See why Kinda is the right choice. It's your move. Imagine how bikes can lead to a healthier, more connected world. Bikes set us apart, free to explore and move, and experience our relationships with people and places like nothing else can. At Saris, we don't just imagine a more bikeable world, we're all in, making it happen. As our Sun Tour shares your passion of cycling, we are committed to giving you the highest level of service in the industry, along with products that hopefully will exceed your expectations. Serving riders is the cornerstone of our business, and we pride ourselves in doing it. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. Velocity Bike Park is the premier bike park for riders in Southern California with 25 miles of world-class trails, obstacles, flow track, and races for mountain biking, gravel, and BMX. Let her rip, Captain. Ultramax. It's the best BMX product for whatever you might need it to be. Yep, that's right. It's the best thing we ever made, and we almost made it. It's the cheapest, most expensive thing ever designed for BMX 
not available where toys and dynamite are sold, but you can still buy an Ultramax t-shirt at dirtyknobs.com. ABC, the American BMX company, bringing you brands like Race Inc., Cook Brothers, Botima, Box, Kuwahara, and BMX Action. Check them out at abmxc.com. ODI Grips, the world leader in grip technology, home of the lock-on grip system. Check them out over at www.odigrips.com. 4416 Designs commercial, take one. There you go. <laughs> All right, 4416 Designs. We make shirts, but we don't sell them. Uh, we're just giving back to the sport. If you're out at Ukaipa BMX and you need a shirt, hit me up. I'll hook you up with one. Yeah, I love that. Mega Design Group is a full-service marketing firm. They handle everything from logos to advertising to packaging. Having over 25 years' experience in the print and marketing fields, they can handle any hurdle. Check it out at megadesigngroup.com. Cool Stop Brake Pads. High performance bicycle brake pads since 1977. Check them out at coolstop.com. That's K O O L S T O P.com. Supercross BMX. What can we say? Our lives revolve around BMX. Founded in 1989 to build the ultimate BMX race frame, they've never strayed from that vision. Hey, for more details, check it out at supercrossbmx.com. Amy Grips is dedicated to using all of its manufacturing strengths, including engineering, research, and development, to successfully prepare for future growth while demanding that the quality of its products provide consumers with complete satisfaction. Making grips since 1974. Check them out at amegrips.com. If you have a Senna cycling helmet, you know what it's like to ride connected. Senna got their start in communications for the motorcycling industry where they're now a leader. Senna brought their same tech that goes into those helmet to helmet motorcycle communication systems into cycling helmets. Senna bike helmets have an integrated microphone and two speakers hidden right into the shell. Senna helmets connect together on a mesh or Bluetooth network so you can talk to your friends while you ride without shouting over wind noise, even if you're not side by side. That is super cool, especially in the trails. Senna helmets also pair with smartphones so you can listen to your playlist without blocking out ambient noise and you can take phone calls and even hear turn by turn GPS directions. Hey, support the podcast that support us, our friends. Uh, the fine folks over there at All Things BMX, which is our favorite Wednesday night live podcast, as you know. Uh, our buddies over there at Beer Budget BMX, uh, Big Bike BMX, and BMX Weekly. Check them out. Check them out. Our friends. Keep it dirty. Keep it dirty.